Chapter 2281 Karmic Hell Flames Lightning danced along Evil Moon, crackling with power. The palace quivered from its power. The Nethergood's dress was torn, but her wound quickly healed. Following that, her dress also healed. The only thing different was that the Nethergood was now deeply shaken. You were able to bring the outside world's thunder force into this place through a Yuan spirit body. The Nethergood could not believe this. This place was the Netherworld. The place in charge of reincarnation. To bring the outside world's objects in here was already surprising. But it wasn't unthinkable. Some life forms did have powerful Yuan spirits that could merge with divine items. When they were inseparable like that, it was possible to bring those divine items with them here. However, throughout all her time in control of the netherworld, she had only seen such a thing a few times. However, to bring a whole elemental power from the outside was unimaginable. This didn't just break the laws of the netherworld, but it also broke the laws of an even higher level. After a brief moment of shock, the Nethergood shook her head at Long Chen. You really are surprising. You were able to bring your world's most violent energy here. Even in the hundred thousand years I've controlled the netherworld, this is a first. Fine. I admit your thunder force was shocking. However, even in the best case, it can only give me a heavy injury. To destroy the god of a world with just this is impossible. Long Chen. Giving up your remote chance of injuring me makes me feel great pity for you. You will regret your foolishness. Long Chen suddenly laughed. I, Long Chen, have never done something that I regret. A man must be able to accept responsibility. Even if I die to you, I won't regret it. If the Nethergood was just a Nethergood, then Long Chen wouldn't give up the slightest, most remote chance to kill them. However, this was a person who looked identical to Len Yuan and whom he had been intimately close to. Although it wasn't a sentimental affair, he wouldn't ever be able to forget what had happened that day. Even if he could comfort himself by saying that it was a result of mistaken identity, he still felt guilt and shame. Facing this Nethergut, despite knowing she wanted him dead and that he had no chance of victory, he still gave up his only chance to heavily injure her. That was essentially giving up his chance to survive, but he didn't regret it. Instead, he felt even more at peace. At the very least, he could die with a clear heart, and now he could fight without that shame weighing down on him. His fear of the Nethergood also began to fade, and his confidence rose. That's fine. Due to this, I won't cast you into purgatory for an eternity. I'll give you a quick death. The Nethergood nodded slightly, raising a hand. Divine might crashed down. Long Chen's black robes billowed in an invisible wind. Black serpents shot out like sharp swords, containing within them endless death energy. Lai Long burst into existence, roaring. It unleashed its full power, transforming into lightning runes that merged into the lightning wings on Long Chen's back, sundering lightning heavenly wings. The two wings slashed down like blades. Boom. The black serpents exploded. Long Chen was no longer holding back. Lai Long had essentially given over all its power, merging with Long Chen. If Long Chen died, it would die as well. In the netherworld, Long Chen couldn't activate the full power of the Paragon Art. He couldn't connect to the lightning field's energy. All he could do was use Lai Long's power. Once all its power was used up, Lai Long would vanish from this world. What Long Chen was using was Lai Long's life. The Nethergood was once more startled. This lightning was even stronger than she had expected. As the ruler of the netherworld, nothing that took place here could escape her. But before this, she hadn't sensed this immense power of Long Chen's. At the same time, she had to admit that if Long Chen had suddenly unleashed this power at the start, perhaps he would have had the slightest chance of killing her. When she thought of that, a ripple finally appeared in her eyes. However, she didn't overthink it. Evil Moon was rumbling toward her with berserk lightning, god power, nether slash, the Nethergood snorted and waved a hand, a black mark appeared in her palm, the palace rumbled as all the Netherworld's power converged on her palm, boom, lightning exploded, the thunder force Long Chen had condensed on top of Evil Moon was shattered, Long Chen felt an irresistible power send him flying, he was shocked to find that this one attack had used up half of Lai Long's life. One more and it would be destroyed. The power of a god was truly terrifying. As he flew back, Long Chen raised a hand. A flame lotus appeared, 
and chanting filled the palace. The palace shuddered wildly as if power was trying to pour into it from every direction. The Nathurgood's expression changed. This world extermination flame lotus was condensed by Huo Long's core energy. The Nirvana scripture activated almost instinctively. When he began chanting, he noticed that there was no effect in the netherworld. But that didn't make him stop. The chanting grew more and more sonorous within the palace, and Long Chen could clearly sense some kind of energy pouring over. However, the Nathurgood Palace blocked that energy from reaching him. The energy crashed against the palace walls, trying to break in. The palace continued to rumble. It was like a volcano was trying to explode into the palace. Even Long Chen was startled by this. He didn't know what was going on. The flame lotus remained the same size as it was not supported by the rest of the world's energy. Boom. It felt like something had exploded outside the palace. The light of endless flames could be seen. From a window, Long Chen managed to see a sea of flames outside the palace. The flames were red but not an ordinary red. It was the red of blood. Even their form seemed similar to blood. For some reason, Long Chen felt a chill upon seeing those flames. He didn't know what those flames were, but he knew that if he was touched by one dot of it, he would be instantly incinerated. As for the Nathurgut, she was horrified. Ignoring Long Chen, she rushed over to her throne. However, just as she approached her throne, an identical figure appeared, pointing a white bone sword at her. There was a bewitching smile on her beautiful face. Did you end up miscalculating Len Yuian? Long Chen was delighted to see her. Len Yuian winked at Long Chen. You're worthy of being my man. When we get back, I'll reward you. The Nathurgood's expression sank. Killing intent raged in her eyes. You're angry? Haha. <laughs> it seems that this is a first since you were defiled by my man. What? Are you getting angry at yourself? At your miscalculation? You wanted to use my man's death to threaten me and force me to appear. Now that I'm here, aren't you happy? Laughed Len Yuian. Long Chen. I didn't expect you to be able to draw over the netherworld's karmic hell flames. It looks like more and more of them are gathering. When the entire netherworld's karmic flames gather here, even the Nethergood palace will be incinerated. Once this throne is destroyed, she will lose her power as Nethergood and be killed. Activate the throne. If I die, you'll die too, shouted the Nethergood. Who cares? I've always been fighting for the initiative, but in the end, I'm just a clone. Even after merging with more of your clones, you remain the true body. No matter how strong I become, I will always be suppressed by you. To tell the truth, I'm pretty tired of it all. We can just die together, said Len Yuian nonchalantly. The Nathurgood furiously took out another bone blade, slashing it at Len Yuian. Their bone blades clashed. Long Chen felt a burst of power send him flying. Long Chen hacked up blood. As for the world extermination flame lotus, he didn't even have a chance to unleash it. It dissipated, and he smashed into the holders of evil. Long Chen was pressed flat against the gates, smiling as she blocked the Nathurgood sword. Len Yuian said, although I'm not a match for you, I can stall you for an incense stick's worth of time. By the end of that, you will be dead. Long Chen, quickly extinguished the flames. The Nathurgood's expressions went through several transformations before she shouted at Long Chen. Chapter 2282 Nathurgood Order The Great Nathurgood, ruler of the netherworld, a supreme existence, is actually begging for help from a mortal. Ha ha ha, it really is delightful to think about. Len Yuian laughed as her sword danced, blocking the Nathurgood's attacks. Their two bone swords danced through the air, unleashing waves of power that tore through the void. Long Chen was pressed flat against the holders of evil by the bursts of power coming from them. Whistling sword Qi slashed through his body. He felt like he was on the verge of collapse. Len Yuian, you and I are one person. If I die, you'll definitely die. Condensing a new divine core will require going through reincarnation and starting over. Are you really willing to destroy a hundred thousand years of cultivation? Shouted the Nathurgut. Len Yuian smiled. I'm fine with it. You separated me from you so you could kill me. Don't act like we're one. You are you, and I am me. I have always been viewed by you as a weakness to be wiped out. Now we can all die together and go through reincarnation. Isn't that great? We don't need to keep fighting for our lives. 
Len Yuian seemed completely indifferent, but this shocked Long Chen. It seemed that the Nirvana scripture had brought over something amazing that could destroy even the Nithurgut. Long Chen wanted to try mediating things, but their immense power was crushing him. He had to do his best just to not die. Long Chen, are you willing to watch her die in front of you? Shouted the Nithurgut. Me and Kangayu, I didn't expect you to have fallen to such a level. You are using me to threaten a mortal? You really are a disgrace of the world of Nithurguts. Mocked Len Yuian. The Nithurgut ignored Len Yuian. If the Nithurgut palace is destroyed, the netherworld will be thrown into chaos. The people that you brought with you will be destroyed. Long Chen was startled, but then he heard Len Yuian sneered. What nonsense. You are merely the one in control of the Nithurgut's laws, not the creator. If you die, the netherworld will continue acting according to its laws. Me and Kangayu, I'm looking down on you more and more. I'm telling you the truth. If the throne is destroyed, the laws here will be temporarily thrown into chaos. There will definitely be a change in the laws. Your dragonblood Legion will be lucky if even a third of them can leave alive. But if the netherworld does not get thrown into such chaos, up to half of the dragonblood Legion can pass according to the laws, declared me and Kangayu. Long Chen, don't you want to say something? How can I fucking speak? Long Chen concentrated all his power just to curse. As a result, he coughed up another mouthful of blood. He felt the power of his Yuan spirit flying away, with death approaching. He immediately shut his mouth. However, this also resulted in me and Kangai reacting. Long Chen was just a mortal, and this fight between gods was unbearable for him. Seeing his state, she was startled. She was no longer able to view him as an ordinary mortal. But seeing him plastered to the gates due to the shockwaves from their power made her realize the difference. Me and Kangai retreated, no longer fighting with Len Yuian. Long Chen finally slid down the gates, feeling like his skeleton had been crushed into paste. This body was made of only his Yuan spirit and was not a physical body. But the Netherworld's laws were mysterious, and everything that passed here felt the same as on the Martial Heaven continent. Long Chen endured the pain. He tried to speak, but suddenly the palace swayed. Me and Kangayu's expression changed. The protective light of the Nithurgud palace has been incinerated by the karmic hell flames. If you don't dispel them, the palace will also be quickly destroyed. Me and Kangayu's tone was flat, but there was some panic in her eyes. All her hopes were on Long Chen now. If he was willing to die along with her, then this place would be turned to ash. The palace's temperature suddenly began to rise. The gates, the walls, the ground, the pillars, they began to glow red. Long Chen felt the heat coming from outside, incinerating some kind of law inside the palace. Perhaps when that law was gone, the palace would also be gone. Promise me that the people I brought can all leave alive, and I'll immediately think of a way to extinguish the flames, said Long Chen. Impossible, said Len Yuian. She is the executioner of the rules, not the one who made them. She does not have that ability Len Yuian's expression was calm. She didn't seem to fear death. She walked over to Long Chen and smiled. Don't be afraid. When she dies, your Yuan spirit will follow the laws of the netherworld and continue onward. You will still be able to complete your breakthrough. What about you? Asked Long Chen. He didn't feel any ease from Len Yuian's words. Instead. He only grew more worried. It sounded like she was saying goodbye. Len Yuian gently caressed Long Chen's cheek. Looking into his eyes, there was sadness in her ocean blue eyes. My foolish man, you have so many women beside you. Are you going to be hung up on me? I've always been hung up on you. I can't forget you, even in my dreams, said Long Chen. It was the truth. He had been constantly worried about her since the last time. Worried about her being consumed by the Nithurgut. He saw his own emotions being reflected within Len Yuian's eyes. Her normally icy expression wavered. Her eyes reddening. In the eyes of the outside world. He was an Iron Man. But even a hero couldn't endure that pain. You really are a bastard. If you act like this. We'll have lost. Lost completely. Len Yuian suddenly held Long Chen tightly and cried. Len Yuian was gratified to be cared about this much. But at the same time, if Long Chen was unwilling to let her die, the Nithurgud would have an advantage over them. 
Long Chen would definitely expel the flames so that she wouldn't die. If that happened, her fate would be to be consumed by the Nithurgut. Her memories would be erased. If that was the only option, then she would rather die. Long Chen, if you wait any longer, we'll all die. Seeing Long Chen and Len Yuian hugging, the Nithurgut felt a strange emotion. The inside of the Nithurgut palace was ablaze. It was starting to show signs of melting. Fine. I'll think of a way. Long Chen formed hand seals, preparing to use the Nirvana scripture. Hold it. Len Yuian suddenly stopped him. Me and Kangayu, for our own safety, hand over the Nithurgut order to us temporarily. Otherwise, who knows if you'll kill us as soon as the flames retreat. The Nithurgut's expression changed. Absolutely not. The Nithurgut order is the key that controls the entire netherworld. Giving it to you would be entrusting my life to you. Len Yuian smiled coldly. You and I are one. Wasn't that what you said to Long Chen? If you want to con me, don't you think you're insulting your own intelligence? Even if I had the Nithurgut order. So what? You are the true body. You have absolute authority. Can I defeat you? You'll still have the Nithurgut's throne. That's where all the laws and energy of the netherworld converge. Even if I have the Nithurgut order, I can't threaten you. It's just a guarantee for us. If you don't like it, then fine. Long Chen, don't waste your energy. Once you force back the flames, she'll instantly kill us. It'd be better for us to all die together. Long Chen had no way of forming seals with Len Yuian holding his hands. He knew she was fighting for more cards to use against the Nithurgut. He could only stare at the Nithurgut. The Nithurgut's expression changed several times, but the rumbling and deforming of the palace made her throw out a black tile. It looked very ordinary. On its black background were nine differently colored diagrams. Long Chen's heart shook. Those diagrams were an image of the nine springs. At the core was the waterfall, and within the waterfall was a set of gates. Before he could get a closer look, Len Yuian took it. With the Nithurgut order in her hand, she smiled. That smile made the Nithurgut feel like she had been tricked. Let's go. Len Yuian's figure swayed. The three of them vanished from within the palace, appearing on top of a giant bone tower. From the giant tower, Long Chen was stunned by what he saw. Everything in the surroundings was enveloped in flames. There were countless crazy and anguished figures within the flames that were attacking the bone tower. The outside of the bone tower had a layer of black chi protecting it, but as those figures crazily attacked, the black chi grew sparser. Long Chen formed hand seals, and chanting filled the air. Long Chen activated the Nirvana scripture with all his power. The surging flames and bestial roars coming from the flames calmed down. The Nithurgut sighed in relief. However, that moment of calm lasted for just a few seconds before they became violent again. The flames erupted with even greater intensity. The Nirvana scripture had failed. It didn't matter how long Chen tried. He was unable to stop the flames. Seeing the black chi be almost burned away, he let out an unwilling roar. How can this be happening? Chapter 2283 Powerless Long Chen was shocked, angered, and panicked. The Nirvana scripture was able to control flames. Just now, the karmic hell flames had clearly started weakening, but he was unable to suppress them. The Nirvana scripture was not the problem. It was that he himself was too weak. These endless flames were on a completely different level from him. Long Chen, I was the one who brought the karmic hell flames here. I used you. Len Yuian stood beside him. Guilty. The Nithurgud's expression changed and her bone sword whipped down. However, Len Yuian seemed to have expected it and pulled Long Chen away. The Nithurgut raged. Len Yuian, why would you do this? How does this benefit you in the slightest now she realized that this was the result that Len Yuian had always wanted. Even Long Chen had been used. The Nithurgut had now been pushed into desperate straits with no way to reverse things. Long Chen was staring at Len Yuian with shock. However, he didn't feel anger toward her. He was merely befuddled. I'm sorry, Long Chen. I'll explain Len Yuian turned to the Nithurgut, raising her bone sword against her. I've been fighting you for a long time now. I've already gathered the energy of all your clones. However, clones remain clones, and we only occupy 40% of your divine energy. As the true body, you have absolute dominion over the remaining 60%. 
Perhaps you anticipated such a thing when you created your clones, so you kept the main power to yourself. As a result, I can never defeat you. I thought of a thousand ways to fight, but not one was able to beat you and take control. I've had enough of those days. When you stopped hunting me down, I knew that your attention had turned to Long Chen. When Long Chen subdued you on the Martial Heaven continent, you came to learn many things about him. You also knew when he would be coming here. You stood guard here, waiting to use him to force me out. You set up the inverted cosmos barrier so that once I came, I couldn't leave. To tell the truth, I'd say that your intelligence must have reverted to the level of a child after you cut me off. Have you forgotten that the inverted cosmos barrier also cuts off your senses toward the outside world? You're the one who trapped yourself. I opened the hell flame purgatory of the 18 levels of purgatory. I didn't have the power to draw them here, but I could construct a spatial portal that allowed them to come here. You thought you understood everything about Long Chen, but you didn't know that Long Chen possesses his own special world within his body. His thunder force and flame energy are both stored there. Furthermore, you could not know that the Nirvana scripture that he controls is an extremely ancient secret art capable of calling the power of all flames. So when you had him cornered to draw me out, you didn't realize you also cornered yourself. At least a tenth of the karmic hell flames from the hell flame purgatory have been drawn here. You should know for how many millions of years the hell flame purgatory have existed. The flames contain the power of karma, the karma of countless life forms that died. Long Chen can control the flames, but he can't control the karma within. As for you, you actually didn't think of that. You thought that Long Chen was able to draw the karmic hell flames here, so he should be able to send them away. Me and Kangayu, you're really too naive. When the Nithurgud heard all this, the fury in her eyes faded away. The flames continued to get closer. They were about to envelop the entire tower, but a faint smile appeared on her face. Karmic flames. The flames of karma. The cycle of karma purifies all things. Even after so many years of overseeing the netherworld, I still didn't understand the true essence of the karmic hell flames. The karma that I set into motion back then is the karma I am reaping now. The faint smile on the Nithurgud's face gave Long Chen the same feeling as Len Yuian. She was no longer an arrogant god, no longer cold and emotionless. She now seemed free. The Nithurgud smiled at Len Yuian. Back then, I was single-mindedly focused on perfection. I kept feeling like I had a hint of goodness wrecking my thoughts, creating contradictions within me. I sent you to a different world so that your experiences could erase that trace of goodness. That way, I could reach a perfect state of heart and break through my current shackles to higher realms. I didn't expect to meet my retribution in the end. All this karma was created by me and must be accepted by me. Len Yuian looked at her with a complicated expression. It truly must be accepted by you. You cannot blame anyone else. I don't resent you for it though. You are me, and I am you. The Nithurgud looked at the Nithurgud order in Len Yuian's hand. She shook her head. I find it hard to believe that my clone would love someone, and immortal at that. Len Yuian smiled. She looked at Long Chen anxiously, then turned back to the Nithurgud. You're once more starting a contradiction. If I didn't love him, how could you use him to draw me out? Ever since you separated me from your soul, your intelligence has been dropping. You were unable to sense it since you are the ruler of this world. But if you had met a real opponent, you would have been killed. I tricked the Nithurgud order out of you to help Long Chen and the Dragonblood Legion pass this tribulation. That way, even if I die, I will have repaid the debt I owe him. Len Yuian turned to Long Chen emotionally. However, she was surprised to see him staring at the sea of flames furiously. There were veins popping on his forehead. She didn't know what he was thinking. Long Chen, don't be afraid. You and your lovers will be fine. You'll be able to pass safely and live good lives in the other world. Len Yuian thought that Long Chen was still trying to resolve their current crisis. He was unaware that even the god of the netherworld had already accepted her fate. No, you can't die. Neither of you. There must be a way. Ideas popped into Long Chen's eyes and deflated just as quickly. His intuition was telling him that he could resolve this predicament, but he was unable to figure out how. The sea of flames was about to overwhelm them in a few more seconds. 
Len Yuyan and Mian Kangaya would both die then. He was unable to accept such a result. However, at this critical moment, his head had stopped working. He was unable to think through the problem clearly, making him feel like tearing open his head. Len Yuyan knew that Long Chen wasn't so panicked because of his own life, but because of them, making her even more emotional. Long Chen, thank you. Although my life was short, having met you during this short time made it worth it. Take care. Len Yuyan raised her hand. The Nathurgut Order shone, enveloping Long Chen in light. The Nathurgut Order was the only thing capable of influencing the laws of the netherworld. Using it, Mian Kangayu had brought Long Chen to the Nathurgut Palace instead of where he should have gone for his breakthrough. Now, Len Yuyan was able to send Long Chen through to where he should be. Furthermore, Len Yuyan was planning on fulfilling Long Chen's wish and allowing all the Dragonblood warriors to pass smoothly. By drawing Long Chen here, the Nethergood would have to face a curse from the Netherworld for interfering with its laws. However, that level of curse was within the acceptable range. However, to use it to allow over 10,000 people to cheat their way through this tribulation would result in a terrifying curse. That curse was something not even a Nethergood could endure. Since they were about to die, she didn't care about this curse. Emotions flowed within Len Yuyan's eyes. Long Chen. Goodbye forever in her final moments. Len Yuyan made her choice. The Nathurgut order shook. The nine-colored whirlpool flowed, sending Long Chen away. Suddenly, Long Chen jumped out of the light, diving into the sea of karmic hell flames. Len Yuyan and Mian Kangayu both shouted at the same time. Even the Nathurgut was stunned, not knowing what Long Chen was doing. This was clearly suicide. Len Yuyan had opened a path for him to leave even letting the Dragonblood Legion pass through the Netherworld. The Nethergood could have stopped her, but she had given up. Perhaps while facing death, she had finally broken the knot in her heart. No longer hating, she chose to accept reality. Although she didn't feel much toward Long Chen, she was affected by Len Yuyan's emotions. Inside, she hoped for Long Chen to survive, so she hadn't interfered with Len Yuyan's actions. However, for Long Chen to jump into the karmic hell flames, even she was unable to react. The Nethergut Order could control everything within the Netherworld, but not the 18 levels of purgatory. The laws there were not under her control. That was precisely why Len Yuyan had drawn the karmic hell flames here to face her end together with me and Kangayu. Long Chen, Len Yuyan let out a mournful cry. She was ready to face death, but she didn't want to see Long Chen die. It was too late though. Long Chen had been devoured by the karmic hell flames. Let alone a mortal. Even a god wouldn't be able to last long. Len Yuyan wiped away her tears. A warm smile appeared on her face. Long Chen. You want to accompany me in death? Then I'll accompany you. She prepared to jump in as well. Just at this moment. A heaven shaking will erupted from within the sea of flames. Chapter 2284 Mystery of the Pill Sovereign Long Chen was doing his best to think of something, but no matter how he tried, he was unable to think of anything to save Len Yuyan. In his fury, his head was buzzing. He had jumped directly into the sea of karmic flames. Since you've chosen me, you won't let me die. I can't rouse you, but I refuse to believe you'll just watch me die. Long Chen roared inside his heart. He could vaguely feel that the Pill Sovereign's will was his only hope, but he was unable to consciously evoke the Pill Sovereign's will. When he fell into the sea of karmic hell flames, he fell unconscious. In that instant, a terrifying power erupted from within his soul. A will that looked down on the rest of the world appeared. When that will appeared, the surging flames seemed to become terrified. They calmed down like a wild wolf becoming a puppy wagging its tail pitifully. The sea of flames burst away. A pair of invisible hands gently held on to Long Chen. As the flames retreated, flame runes trembled, prostrating themselves to Long Chen, or more accurately, toward the hands holding Long Chen. The two hands vanished in but a moment, causing Long Chen to begin falling once more. A different pair of hands took their place, holding Long Chen. It was Len Yuyan. In the distance, the karmic hell flames retreated back toward purgatory. Who? Who is he? The Nathurgood looked at Long Chen with absolute shock. I don't know either, but the first time I saw him, I had a feeling that he would grow to a terrifying level. 
He is the only one I can rely on. With him, I can handle you. That's why I pursued him, to make him grow up faster, said Len Yuian. Len Yuian maintained a safe distance from the Nithurgud. Who knew if the Nithurgud would suddenly attack now that the danger had passed? Seeing her vigilance, the Nithurgud shook her head. You don't need to be on guard. I chose the wrong path. I was the one who gambled and lost. This netherworld is yours to oversee. Perhaps this world doesn't need me. The Nithurgud faded into the void, shocking Len Yuian. She felt the Netherworld's loss converging toward her, submitting. The Nithurgud had bestowed her own power to her. However, in her fading image, she seemed desolate. Long Chen's soul fell into endless darkness. Everything was deathly silent. Am I dead? Long Chen looked around at the darkness, feeling sorrowful. He had failed in the end. He hadn't managed to save Len Yuian or the Nithurgud. He had died himself, and the Dragonblood Legion would definitely be cut to half its number at least. He hadn't managed to resolve the mystery of his origins. He hadn't found his father and mother. He was forever gone from his brothers and sisters. Do you feel unresigned? Just at that moment, a woman appeared within the darkness. She was so beautiful that Long Chen forgot to breathe. However, her figure was clearly illusory. You, Long Chen was startled. He had seen this woman twice before. The first time was in the Heaven Dragon Flame region, when he had just earned the second volume of the Nirvana scripture. She had appeared and said some curious words. The second time was in the Brahma Divine Palace. She had been talking to herself again, but at that time, Long Chen had felt great pain, as if the sight of her had triggered some memories buried deep within him. This time, he found that although she was illusory, there was no longer the feeling of being isolated by endless space and time. It felt like she was actually present. For some reason, Long Chen felt great pain upon seeing her. He couldn't hold back his emotions. Trying to remain as detached as possible, he asked, Can I ask who you are? The woman smiled. That smile made Long Chen feel like spring had returned, like flowers were blooming. All his anger, sadness, resentment at dying, they all faded. I am the master of those memories deep in your soul. You are the Pill Sovereign. Long Chen was shocked. The Pill Sovereign was actually a woman? The Pill Sovereign? I suppose. My soul is incomplete and shattered. It could only merge with you in a very limited manner. So you only have the very first initial memories of when I embarked on my Tao. When I reached sovereignty of the Pill Tao, I was 37. At that time, he was still one year younger than me. The woman was looking at Long Chen but was talking to herself, as if lost in her memories. Eventually, she sighed sadly and focused on Long Chen once more. I have two pieces of news for you, one good and one bad. Which do you want to hear first? Long Chen was surprised that the Great Pill Sovereign would play a little game with him. Up to you. In any case, I will forever be hearing more bad news than good news. No, actually, I have two bits of good news for you this time. The first is that you haven't died. The woman smiled at him. I'm not dead? Great. I knew that you wouldn't let me die. Long Chen jumped up excitedly. If he wasn't dead, that meant that there was still hope. You're smart to use this method to arouse my discarnate will. Having done so, the second bit of good news is that you now have a chance to obtain the third volume of Nirvana Scriptures Flame Control Arts and Immortal Divine Pill Refining Arts. The Flame Control Arts and Immortal Divine Pill Refining Arts of the Third. Volume of the Nirvana Scripture? Would a pill refined from such things be enough to allow someone to directly ascend into a god or immortal? Long Chen was filled with joy at this, but the woman continued. However, having used this extreme method to arouse my discarnate soul results in bad news as well. My discarnate soul is fading away. I no longer have the power to transmit those to you. You. You're going to disappear. Long Chen reached out to grab her, but his hands passed right through her. She was just an image, not a solid body. Seeing that Long Chen's first thought wasn't what he had just lost, but her, her smile vanished, replaced with a warm expression. You are him, but you aren't him. Perhaps he is you, but you aren't him. Long Chen, if you learn one day that you were used, will you hate me? The woman reached out and held Long Chen's face. Long Chen could only feel a cold feeling but not her actual flesh. However, deep in his soul, he could feel her tender emotions. 
Long Chen shook his head. I won't hate you. I will never hate you. I like acting according to intuition. I don't need any further reason than that. The woman's smile returned. You're really the same as him when he was young. He didn't care about the consequences of his actions either. It was foolish enough to make someone hate him, but it made me love him unswervingly. The woman's figure began to fade away. She sighed sadly. Time is up? In this world, time is the strongest weapon. No one can stop it. As she vanished, she pressed a hand against Long Chen's forehead. A rune appeared on his forehead and merged into his soul. Chanting filled his head. However, this time, the chanting was a woman's voice. The soft but perfect chanting contained a certain emotion, one of sorrow at the world. Long Chen felt all the tension in his body be released. Flames runes whirled within his body. He felt like he was a ball of fire. Many aspects about controlling flames that he hadn't understood before were now perfectly clear to him. However, the chanting grew quieter until it stopped. It started again, only to fade away quickly. The darkness suddenly vanished. Long Chen found himself awake in a bed. Len Yuian was sitting beside him, seeing him awake. She smiled. Were you dreaming? Why are you crying? Only then did Long Chen realize that tears filled his eyes. That illusory woman had made him feel forlorn when she had left. He hadn't thought that he would cry in his dreams. A bit embarrassed, he said. It's nothing. I thought that I was dead. So I cried. It's a good thing I wasn't so scared that I pissed myself instead. Long Chen. Len Yuian suddenly wrapped her arms around his neck. Kissing him. Within her embrace. Long Chen's hands naturally wrapped around her slender waist. Len Yuian suddenly laughed, blushing. There was a strange emotion in her voice. It's no longer your first time. Why are you acting like you have no experience? Long Chen was provoked and reached out to tear off her clothes. Len Yuian's palm slammed into Long Chen's chest, blasting apart his black robes. Have you forgotten what I said? You, Long Chen, are fated to be subdued by me. Len Yuian's hair flipped back. Her black dress transformed into black runes that slowly dissipated. Chapter 2285 Subdue Her? Translator. Born to be Long Chen felt his body was about to collapse. Len Yuian was like a wild leopardess. Long Chen didn't know how many times he had been tormented before being utterly spent and falling asleep. However, this time was better than last time. He finally experienced what it was supposed to feel like. But that feeling had lasted too long and for too many times. Even though Long Chen considered himself to have a strong body, he was almost exhausted to death. Long Chen had tried to free himself several times but had been suppressed by Len Yuian. She had even summoned runic chains to bind his hands and feet. No matter how he struggled, he was unable to break those chains. He had tried to press Len Yuian beneath him but had never succeeded. More exhausted than if he had fought an immense battle. Long Chen finally slept. After an unknown amount of time, Long Chen slowly woke. Len Yuian was sleeping on his chest like a gentle cat, a sweet smile on her face. It was like a flower that had received the nourishment of rain and grew even more resplendent. As the beauty slept, for the first time, Long Chen stared peacefully at Len Yuian from a close distance. At this time, Len Yuian wasn't the slightest bit wild. She lay there warmly. Long Chen did a careful count of her eyelashes and eyebrows. They were identical in number and position. Her face was perfectly symmetrical. Although most people's faces looked symmetrical, they weren't perfectly so. If you looked closely, there would be many differences between the halves of their faces. Long Chen moved down from Len Yuian's face. He saw her curves and silky skin. Some changes occurred with Long Chen's body without him noticing. Len Yuian's eyes fluttered open. Long Chen hastily shut his eyes and feigned sleep. Suddenly, her giggling rang out in his ear. Your body has sold you out. Long Chen blushed. He suddenly grabbed Len Yuian's waist and pressed her down onto the bed. However, Len Yuian laughed and slipped away. Standing in front of the bed, she stretched and yawned, fully revealing her body to Long Chen, making him feel like he was on fire. His blood flow quickened. He, you want it? Beg me. Len Yuian laughed as if she could read Long Chen's thoughts. Long Chen looked at Len Yuian. She was normally icy, arrogant, an existence too high to blaspheme. But at this time, she was incredibly seductive. 
Long Chen felt like he was about to start burning Novaloon.com beg me. Go ahead. Len Yuian leaned closer, her long hair framing her perfect face. She was even more charming now, making even Long Chen feel like his will was about to crumble. However, he clenched his teeth and refused to speak. Seeing him bitterly enduring, Len Yuian laughed delightedly. Stiffly, Long Chen turned away, no longer looking at her. He, as expected of my man, you're smart. Even if you begged, I wouldn't have given it to you. Len Yuian giggled and snapped her finger. Black runes condensed around her from the feet up, transforming into her dress. Once her dress was on, her giggling stopped. Her smile slowly faded, and she once more became an icy and arrogant goddess. Is it interesting for you to act like this? Long Chen sat cross-legged on the bed without the slightest threat on his body. He hadn't begged because he understood Len Yuian far too well. He could never get anything from her by begging. Instead, he would just be taunted. Len Yuian said, What's not interesting about it? It's true that I like you, but it's not like I would marry you like some normal mortal. Nor did I say that you would be the only one. You are the first man that I, Len Yuian, have subdued. What's that supposed to mean? You're going to look for more men. Long Chen's expression turned cold. Oh, is my man jealous? What a good feeling. But don't you feel that if you're able to get multiple women, I should be able to do the same? Len Yuian looked at Long Chen. Of course not. You are my woman. In this life, you can only be my woman, declared Long Chen decisively. Len Yuian smiled faintly. If you want to be my only man, it's not out of the question. It'll just be up to your own abilities. What does that mean? Demanded Long Chen. You know that me and Kang Gaiyu and I are the gods of this netherworld. We are one. She has given me her god energy, but she is still the true body. Our power is forever balanced. As a result, our hearts were connected at that moment for eternity. She can feel everything I do, and I can feel everything she does. Perhaps I can consider having you be my only man. But what about her? If she finds her own man, I'd feel it when they're intimate. That feeling, it's very lifelike, said Len Yuian deliberately. Long Chen turned green. If me and Kang Gaiyu found her own man, it would pull Len Yuian as well? That was unacceptable. That's why, if you want to keep me forever, you better think of a way to subdue her. Len Yuian leaned down and whispered into his ear. She kissed him on the cheek. Didn't I already do it? Long Chen felt a chill. Last time doesn't count because she wasn't willing. Furthermore, she was in a different world, separated from her divinity. However, if you could be together here, you would have fully subdued her. She would definitely be loyal to you. Then you wouldn't need to worry about anyone else, said Len Yuian solemnly. Wasn't this crazy? To subdue an icy god was as difficult as defying the heavens. However, it didn't matter how difficult it was. Long Chen had to do it. He wouldn't allow another man to touch his woman or even if it was just half of her. Long Chen stood and walked off the bed. Curiously, his clothes automatically appeared on his body. That was good. If he had to go talk to the Nithurgud naked, perhaps she would kill him instantly. I want to know about her past, said Long Chen. That should make it easier. Her past was sealed by her. Even I don't know it, said Len Yuian. Then what am I supposed to do? Demanded Long Chen hotly. I trust that you'll think of something. Len Yuian nodded at him, giving him her optimistic support. As for Long Chen, he raged inside. But in any case, he had to try. He learned that Mi and Kang Gaia was currently at the highest point of the Nithurgud Palace. The Divine Wind Eye. Long Chen walked over. The Divine Wind Eye was a giant observation platform. From there. It was possible to see far into the distance. Long Chen had only just climbed up when he felt some kind of energy support his own vision, allowing him to see further. Long Chen saw a world he had never seen before. It was very similar to the Martial Heaven continent. There were cities bustling with busy people. Long Chen had come to see me in Kangayu, but he was drawn in by this sight. He watched the people of that world go about their business. Why have you come here? Just at this moment. Mi and Kang Gaiyu's voice rang out behind him. Only then did he realize that she was standing beside him, looking in the direction that he was looking. I came to, to, to talk. Long Chen's mouth almost slipped.
He almost said that he had come to seduce her. The reason he had an automatic urge to tell the truth was because she was a genuine god. Long Chen could clearly feel that she was different from Len Yuian. She controlled a different kind of energy. Facing her was a very difficult thing. Me and Kang Gaiyu didn't seem to sense anything. What is there to talk about? The victor is king, while the loser is cast away. If you gamble, you must be willing to lose. I planted this karma, so I reaped it. She won. I lost. I've already given her this world. She deserves it. You're wrong. How am I wrong? Me and Kang Gaiyu turned to look at him. Long Chen looked into her eyes. Neither of you lost. Both of you won. I don't understand. Me and Kang Gaiyu frowned slightly. Long Chen didn't directly reply. He instead asked, Do you drink wine? Seemingly surprised by Long Chen's sudden change in topic, she answered, Occasionally. What does this have to do with drinking wine? Good. I also drink. Let's drink together. I'll tell you how you both won. Long Chen looked around and didn't see a place to sit. Me and Kang Gaiyu waved her hand. Runes condensed into two chairs and a table. She sat, her gaze on Long Chen, seeming to be waiting for his answer. It seemed that there really was an opening. It was time to show off his skills. Long Chen was encouraged by her expectant gaze. Chapter 2286 Divine Boasting Translator Born to be Long Chen took out some wine bowls. Hesitating, he asked, Do you have any good wine that I can try? The Nithurgud looked at Long Chen. Upon extending her hand, a delicate fist-sized jug appeared. However, she didn't pour it into Long Chen's bowl. Instead, she took out two small jade cups. They were so small that Long Chen felt that they could only contain the tiniest amount of wine. The Nithurgud passed a cup to Long Chen. But before she could say anything, Long Chen had tossed the wine into his mouth. As soon as it touched his tongue, he spat it out and started coughing. The wine went flying toward me and Kang Gaiyu, but it parted around her. Long Chen violently coughed, like he was coughing out his tongue. He wanted to speak but was unable to say anything. Me and Kang Gaiyu slowly smiled at Long Chen's wretched state. You, Long Chen only managed one word before succumbing to the violent coughs. Even tears squeezed out of his eyes. This wine was excruciatingly spicy. It was like lava exploding in his mouth and the strangest thing about it was that it even invaded his soul. Long Chen had drunk spicy wines before. Tu Kian Chang's wine in particular was strong in that aspect. However, even his wine was not like this. This didn't even feel like wine. It seemed more like poison. You drank it too fast. You can't blame me. Me and Kang Gaiyu shook her head at Long Chen's furious gaze. This was definitely intentional. Long Chen was sure of it. She had had more than enough time to explain it while pouring the wine but hadn't. Only acting like she wanted to say something when he was already swallowing it. Fine. This wine. Long Chen suddenly found that his voice had changed. It was rougher. Like an old bull. Me and Kang Gaiyu laughed. Feeling like she was lacking in propriety. She turned away. What is going on? Raged Long Chen. This voice was not his. It was incredibly ugly. Like an old cow farting. Even he couldn't bear it. Just as me and Kang Gaiyu managed to suppress her laughter and look back, Long Chen's furious gaze made her laugh once more. Finally, me and Kang Gaiyu pointed a finger at Long Chen's throat. A cool and refreshing feeling blew away the burning feeling. Seeing that he was still angry, she said, It truly is wine, and a high-grade wine of the divine level at that. I am normally only willing to drink a bit of it occasionally, but because you are immortal. You cannot come into contact with that kind of energy. So it naturally burns your throat. Are you sure you're not scamming me? Demanded Long Chen. He realized that his voice had returned to normal. I'm sure. Me and Kang Gaiyu nodded. All right. Goodbye. Long Chen nodded and rose. Didn't you want to talk? You're leaving like this? Are you angry? Me and Kang Gaiyu was slightly curious. If you're really angry and don't even have this little bit of endurance. How will you accomplish anything big? TCH. Who said that I ever wanted to achieve something big? I wish I could be an old farmer with a group of wives to keep my bed warm. Hesitating. Long Chen sat back down. He hadn't accomplished his mission yet. Let's keep talking. You can put away your cat piss wine. I'll give you some of my fine wine. 
Long Chen took out jugs of wines from his primal chaos space. Miang Kangayu shook her head. One mouthful of this divine wine is equivalent to decades of cultivation, but you aren't blessed enough to enjoy it. Wine is wine, while medicine is medicine. The former has its own realm to enjoy, while the latter must be taken for a goal. One is passive, one is active. Although this wine I've gathered is from the mortal world, it has manifested its own grand Tao. Even as a god in control of a whole world, some things can't be changed. For example, the heart can drag down mortals and gods with no distinction. All living things must traverse the sea of bitterness. All living things must traverse the sea of bitterness. Me and Kangayu seemed to be affected by Long Chen's final sentence. Here, first try this bowl of wine. If you are willing, you can dispel your god energy first and enjoy it with the attitude of a mortal. That will give you greater comprehension. Long Chen handed the wine bowl to her. Me and Kangayu hesitated ever so slightly before a rune lit up on her forehead and then vanished. Long Chen clearly felt her aura change. She was no longer a supreme god but more like a true woman. Long Chen was startled inside. Me and Kangayu had truly dispelled her god energy. That was a kind of trust in him. If he had been colluding with Len Yuan and attacked her together at this moment, she wouldn't be able to resist. Without realizing it, a new tender feeling appeared in his heart. Trust was something extremely hard to obtain. Although she was a god, due to the nine-star hegemon body art, he was still able to sense the change in her emotions. Even he didn't understand this. When you drink it, let the wine pass through the two sides of your tongue and converge in your throat. Don't look at me like that. I'm not scamming you. Long Chen hastily raised his hands in innocence upon seeing Mi and Kangayu look at him warily. Mi and Kangayu was naturally wary after how angry he had been when she had offered him wine. Was this payback? But then thinking about it, she found it laughable. How could something from the mortal world harm her? She allowed the wine to enter her mouth according to Long Chen's method. Curiously, the wine was like clear water when it touched the tip of her tongue. Then when passing by the two sides of her tongue, it gradually unleashed its flavor before finally converging at her throat. She was surprised to find that when the two streams converged, a new flavor appeared. Although the flavor of the wine wasn't very strong, she reflected upon it for a long time. She had never drunk such a wine. Good wine, praised me in Kangayu. This wine is called Rouge Red. It's a very, very ordinary hundred flower wine. When it enters the mouth, the wine energy is slowly released. The left side gives birth to sweetness, while the right side gives birth to bitterness. They advance together and then merge, reflecting the union of yin and yang. That is the essence of this wine, explained Long Chen. Me and Kangayu drank another mouthful after hearing this. She experienced those sensations that she hadn't noticed the first time. It was true. The left side was sweet and the right side was bitter. When they merged, a new flavor was born. The divine world's fine wines weren't really wine. They were medicinal wine. The fine aspect about them referred to their medicinal effect, not taste. Actually, the finer the wine, the worse it tasted. I didn't expect that I would be a frog at the bottom of a well. The mortal world actually possesses such fine wines. Why would anyone dream of becoming a god or immortal with such a wine? Me and Kangayu sighed emotionally. Long Chen clapped his hands in praise. Miss Kangayu, this question is excellent. Let's discuss it in a bit. Please, try this wine. Long Chen handed over another bowl of wine. This wine was golden like honey, but it gave off a refreshing scent. How am I supposed to drink it this time? Asked Me and Kangayu. With your mouth. Me and Kangayu laughed. How else? I meant if there was anything special. No. Drink it however you please. Me and Kangayu drank the wine and was instantly overwhelmed by a burst of flavor. However, when she tasted it carefully, there was a trace of bitterness within the sweetness. Following that, Long Chen gave her another bowl of wine. Me and Kangayu drank it and frowned due to the bitterness. What do you feel? asked Long Chen. The first bowl of this wine had a hint of bitterness within its sweetness, but the second bowl was full of bitterness, said Me and Kangayu. Long Chen smiled. The first bowl is bitterness within sweetness, while the second bowl is sweetness within bitterness. Why didn't I sense such a thing? Demanded me and Kangayu. Long Chen didn't reply. He handed over another bowl of wine. 
When me and Kangayu drank this bowl, she finally sensed that trace of sweetness. Long Chen finally explained. This is why I said that there are still many principles that are the same for both mortals and gods. Those three bowls of wine were the same. To tell the truth, I was also puzzled just like you. Compared to bitterness, we prefer sweetness. A trace of bitterness within sweetness is easily sensed. But the slightest sweetness within bitterness is easily overlooked. When we are in pain, we turn a blind eye to things we find negligible. When we are happy, disagreeable things are easily noticed. Our sense of taste is the same as our perceptions. Our own desires trick us into this misperception. Me and Kangayu pondered this explanation. Long Chen continued. Let's not discuss all that right now. Let's keep trying more wine. Every one of these wines possesses its own realm. If you like it, I want you to tell me a story about this next wine. This was the fourth wine. Me and Kangayu's thoughts were all over the place as if she didn't have time to consider each wine. When she saw the fourth wine, she was startled. There were two kinds of energy intertwining within the wine. What kind of wine is this? The Yun and Yang Harmonious Merger Wine. Chapter 2287 Doing Some Happy Stuff Translator. Born to be the Yun and Yang Harmonious Merger Wine? Why did that sound almost lecherous? Yun and Yang coming together? Me and Kangayu stared at Long Chen. Long Chen smiled. This wine's name might sound a bit off in that sense. But it's not like you imagine this wine was created by a master of the wine god palace. His position in the wine god palace was only second to the high priest. He rarely came out, and even Long Chen had only seen him twice. Me and Kangaya was clearly suspicious that this was one of those lover wines. When Long Chen said its name in particular, his expression became a bit wretched, increasing her suspicions. However, when she thought about it, Something from the mortal world couldn't harm her even with her suppressing her god energy. Being stared at, Long Chen could only cough awkwardly. How could he explain something like that? An explanation would be covering it up and accepting that it was true. Long Chen could only indicate with his hand to drink. Me and Kangayu took a sip of the wine. Two different streams of energy danced on her tongue, creating an indescribable feeling. This yin and yang harmonious merger wine is very miraculous. You can test it. Drink three mouthfuls, each bigger than the last, said Long Chen. Me and Kangayu drank according to his method. The wine energy grew, forming powerful waves inside her mouth. The combination of yin and yang refreshed her mind. This wine was created by a master of the wine community. There are 50 formulas for creating it, but in reality, you can only taste 49 of them. One of them was lost in the process of making the wine, said Long Chen. Why is that? Me and Kangayu did not understand how that was possible. Long Chen smiled. It seemed that gods cultivated a completely different path and weren't aware of the storytelling scams of the human race. He solemnly said, there are 50 paths, but only 49 can be used. The cosmos is incomplete. Heaven and earth are not full. It is precisely due to this that the Maria Deos can exist and evolve. A bottle filled with beans packed so tightly that they cannot move becomes dead. But if a portion of the beans is taken out, then the remaining ones can freely move. When they move, the world within the bottle is alive. Then the bottles can fill up a vat. And in the same principle, the bottles must have their own space to move. Above wine bottles and wine VATs are wine cellars and wine houses all growing bigger until it reaches the stars, the cosmos, the principle never changes, going the opposite way, the cosmos contains the movements of space and time, as well as everything in between, how can they move, precisely because a bit is missing, they are constantly able to change, there is no such thing as absolute perfection in this world because perfection is dead, me and Kangayu stood without realizing it, her eyes shining, Long Chen's words had struck a chord within her. The knot inside her heart started to unravel. Things that she hadn't been able to see before became clear. Long Chen was pleased by her reaction. This principle and others were all the Nine Star Hegemon Body Art's intuition. The Nine Star Hegemon Body Art was like its own scale capable of measuring the boundless universe. He was quite delighted to see that even a god could be won over by what he spouted. Come, sit, let's talk more. Long Chen drank as much wine as me and Kangayu did. 
so he personally experienced the effects. Being able to keep up with the god roused his courage, and he pulled her down. Surprisingly, she really did obediently sit down. Taking the bowl he gave her, she toasted with him and drank. Thank you. The essence of this theory of yours has truly benefited me, said Mian Kangayu. She was unable to imagine how someone from a mortal world could say something even more thought-provoking than immortal scriptures and divine canons. Long Chen's theory was plain and easy to understand, but in reality, when she thought it over, it contained endless marvels that made her sigh. Long Chen switched out the wines again, toasting with her. Let's first drink before going back to the question you asked. The question I asked. Mian Kangaya was startled. Without her realizing it, her face was starting to turn rosy from the wine. Have you forgotten? You asked why someone would dream of becoming a god or immortal when there exists such fine wine in the mortal world. Right. I did say that. Mian Kangaya smiled. Taking the initiative to actually pour wine for Long Chen. She looked at him expectantly. It seemed she very much enjoyed drinking and chatting with Long Chen. Long Chen was ecstatic. A god had personally poured wine for him. That was enough for him to brag for a lifetime. This time, let me offer a toast to your learning and comprehension. Me and Kangai raised her bowl. Cheers. Long Chen laughed and toasted. Long Chen felt the wine starting to get to him. He stealthily looked at me and Kangai, seeing she didn't have much of a change other than being a bit rosier. If this continued, he would lose badly in alcohol tolerance. Unacceptable. She had already released her god energy. How was she able to drink so much? Long Chen had come prepared. These wines were all meticulously picked out. Although when drinking them, they didn't seem very strong. When combined, their effect was incredible. Even Long Chen didn't dare to drink this much normally. He was starting to be unable to bear it. He had once drunk this wine with Gu Yang and the others, and as a result, they had collapsed after just one bowl of it, not waking for three days. However, Mian Kangayu had drunk a dozen jugs of it and was still fine. I can't continue like this. She's going to crush me. He saw Mian Kangayu pouring more wine. It seemed she wanted to keep drinking and drinking. This time, when Long Chen drank, he activated the primal chaos space sending the wine inside, but on the outside, it looked as if he drank it, I've toasted to you with three bowls of wine now, it can count as an apology for my hot-headedness, let's keep talking about our previous topic, said Mian Kangayu, it seemed that this toast was an apology for the divine wine she had taken out Novaloon.com Long Chen took out another jug of wine and poured, I previously said that this question of yours was excellent, I wasn't sweet talking, you hit the nail right on the head and found the foundation of every living being. What foundation? Desire. Long Chen put the wine jug to the side and didn't continue drinking. Even if he was sending the wine into the primal chaos space, some of it was still released when it entered his mouth. He had to slow down. Desire isn't good or bad, but many people think of it in a negative way. Desire is what pushes us forward. It gives us a thirst to explore the true meaning of life. But when desire has no limits from reason, it will explode and consume someone. For a mortal, the basic desires are having enough food to eat and having a warm bed. After that, they'll desire not having to worry about basic necessities. After that, they'll want more and more. To become a noble. To become emperor. To never die. Long Chen intentionally paused and drank a mouthful of wine. Enthralled. Me and Kangayu asked. What's after never dying? After never dying is courting death in as fancy a way as possible me and Kangayu smiled. Are you giving me a roundabout curse? As Nithurgut, she was undying. But to break through to a new level, she had split herself up. Was that courting death in a fancy way? Long Chen also smiled. I wouldn't dare. I just meant that people's desires are endless. After satisfying one desire, a new one will appear. It creates one goal after another. Both humans and gods have desires, and so they have goals. However, many people are overwhelmed by their desires and see only their goals, neglecting many other important things. What important things? Long Chen switched wines, and me and Kangayu drank a bowl of it. He looked into her eyes. Yes, that thing is called happiness. Mingayu, can I ask you, are you happy? Happy, 
Mian Kangayu stared at him. Her eyes reddened with emotion. She seemed to be recalling something from the past that had hurt her. Killing intent began to brew in her eyes. Long Chen jumped. If her killing intent manifested, her god energy would return. All his previous efforts would then be for nothing. Let's go. I'll bring you to do some happy stuff. Long Chen changed the subject, grabbing her hand and rushing off. Chapter 2288 Core of the Starfield Translator Born to be where are you bringing me? You don't even know this place. Me and Kangaya was following along as Long Chen pulled her flying off the tower, but she didn't know what he was thinking. There's a city over there. Let's go have some fun. Long Chen pointed at a city in the distance Novaloon.com that's Miluo City, a residence for the Netherworld's regular people. What's interesting about that place? Also, even though it looks close, there are three separate spaces between us. For you, it would take at least three years of travel to get there. Me and Kangayu frowned slightly. What? It's that far? But you definitely have a way though. Long Chen was startled, but then he smiled. Seeing his expectant look, she didn't feel good about declining. Me and Kangaya waved her hand, and runes condensed into a portal. When they came out, they were within a bustling city. Long Chen looked back and saw that the portal had vanished. Furthermore, he was unable to see the bone tower they had been at just now. Immortals and mortals are separate. You can't see the tower from here through the three spaces. These people can't see us either, said me and Kangayu. What are the three spaces? Asked Long Chen. The three spaces refer to three voids. The void of the heavenly deos, the void of the world's barrier, and the void of life. I've tested these three voids before, and they're quite mystical. They separate the netherworld from the mortal world. Gods can descend to mortal worlds, but for mortals to pass through the three voids requires ascension. After ascending, they can't return. The three voids separate their past and future. Only I, the ruler of the netherworld, can freely pass. Even Len Yuian is unable to reach this place, said me and Kangayu. Long Chen was startled. Does this mean that the three voids are the final barrier of the martial heaven continent's experts? Once broken through, you ascend into a god or immortal. Me and Kangayu shook her head. That's not the same. I've gone to your martial heaven continent. The laws are completely different. The martial heaven continent has its own heroic spirits protecting it. Even for me, I must strip away the majority of my divine energy to enter. Otherwise, back then, me and Kangayu stopped there, and Long Chen felt a burning sensation on his face. He knew what she was referring to. However, he acted like he hadn't heard it. What are those heroic spirits? Even you must be afraid of it. Was it a sovereign? No. That was impossible. How could a sovereign threaten a god? If they were that powerful, how could they all be dead? I'm not sure. Their power is connected to the laws of the martial heaven continent. If I wish to set foot on the continent, I must follow their rules. Let me put it to you this way. The martial heaven continent is no ordinary continent. I've observed it for a long time, and I suspect it is the core of a starfield, said me and Kangayu. The core of a starfield? What is that? This world is far vaster than you can imagine. A single star can give rise to life, while it itself is also alive. After thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of stars link up, they form their own trajectory and become a star field. They move according to a set rhythm, and the one in charge of that rhythm is the core. It must be a powerful star. However, it seems that the Martial Heaven continent is not a complete core. It has been badly damaged and seems to be on the verge of collapsing. Despite that, it still possesses its own powerful laws that even I must obey. Long Chen had not expected the Martial Heaven Continent to be such an existence. Was the damage to it referring to the Battle of the Immortal Era? For a battle to damage the very core of a star field. Just what level of experts had fought back then? They had gotten off topic. They couldn't continue like this because Long Chen saw that me and Kangaya was starting to throw off the effects of the wine. Let's not talk about this. Do you know why I brought you here? I was the one who brought you here, corrected me and Kangaya. Cough. If you put it that way, then, you. Fine. You're right. Long Chen wanted to argue, but he found he had no ground to stand on. Me and Kangaya smiled at his awkwardness and found him to be interesting. 
She felt relaxed around him as if she could be free from restrictions. Let's go comprehend the truth about life. Long Chen grabbed me and Kang Gyu's hand. She hesitated for a moment, but in the end, decided not to fight his hand. She walked alongside him. They reached city gates with three cursive characters written on top of them. Long Chen didn't recognize them. Miluo City. Yup. These three characters were written decently, but they clearly lack some force. Long Chen nodded as he walked through. Me and Kang Gyu laughed. These are the Sangayan gates. Long Chen's expression stiffened. He had an urge to slap himself. His urge to act all-knowing had ended up losing him even more face. However, just who was Long Chen? His skin was thicker than the city walls. Of course I know these are the Sangayan gates. I just feel like this Grand Miluo city must not have a decent calligrapher to write it so badly. Me and Kang Gyu didn't quibble with him. She only looked at him with a knowing smile. Long Chen pretended not to see that look. This place was quite similar to the Martial Heaven continent. There were many cultivators around. However, their auras were different from the people of the Martial Heaven continent. Despite that, Long Chen was still able to estimate their power. Based on his estimates, the strongest people here were only comparable to soul transformation experts. They were unable to threaten him. However, as he walked through the streets, more and more curious gazes turned toward him, making him feel out of place. Do they recognize me as an outsider? Your cultivation base is higher than theirs so they can't tell what level you are. As for me, they can't even see me, said me and Kang Gyu. Long Chen suddenly realized what the issue was. He was holding me and Kang Gyu's hand, but if she was invisible to them, his walking posture must seem unnatural to them. Don't mess around. Otherwise, others will think I'm crazy, complained Long Chen. Me and Kang Gyu smiled and materialized herself to these mortals. She was especially conspicuous in her black dress. It seemed that the mortal world had never given rise to such a dress. As for Long Chen, he was wearing black robes that matched her dress. The two of them continued down the streets, looking at their surroundings. Long Chen said, everyone is hustling for their own goals. It's all due to their desires. Every person has different goals and is fighting for them. A commoner and an emperor both have their own goals to strive for. But many people don't even know what they're working for. Only a few people can take a pause and ask themselves what they're doing. Then have you asked yourself? Yes. I often ask myself over and over again. Why do I live? Then what's your answer? I live to make sure the people I love and the people who love me can be at peace and happy, said Long Chen. Me and Kang Gaya was drawn in my Long Chen's gaze at that moment. Her heartbeat quickened without her sensing it. There seemed to be a burning flame within his eyes. It made her tense up and feel at a loss as to what to do. The two of them continued and experienced the things this world had to offer. They forgot about their cultivation basis, merging into this busy world. At the start. Me and Kang Gaya was clearly ill at ease, but as Long Chen guided her, she gradually forgot about her status as a god, using the viewpoint of an ordinary person to view this world. A supreme god was a lonely existence, while the mortal world was like a nest of ants in her eyes. She had never paid much attention to them. However, today, she was walking through the mortal world, and she found that it wasn't as inferior as she had imagined. She also saw the emotions of the mortal world. She saw a girl holding candy that tripped. Her candy became covered in mud and couldn't be eaten. The girl's mother scolded her as she took out three coins from a wrinkled up purse, buying her a new stick of candy. Seeing how delighted the girl became, me and Kang Gyu stared silently for a long time. Long Chen said, those were the only coins she had. Perhaps buying that stick of candy means that she'll have to go hungry tonight. But in her eyes, the happiness of that girl is the most important thing. Perhaps it's foolish to others. Those three coins could buy a dozen buns to keep them full for a day. But sometimes life is just like that. A shoe only fits on the right foot. And happiness can only be realized by yourself. What's wrong? Long Chen suddenly saw that me and Kang Gyu had started crying. He reached out and wiped away her tears. Me and Kang Gyu didn't say anything. She allowed him to wipe away her tears. Even afterward, she didn't say anything. Long Chen knew that he was doomed. The wine's effect had completely faded. He didn't know what he could use to pluck her heart strings. 
her god energy was slowly returning, so she would no longer be able to maintain the attitude of immortal. Mi and Kangayu didn't wish to continue strolling the streets, so she brought Long Chen to a mountain outside the city. After that, she stood beside a waterfall, watching the water crash down for a long time before speaking. Long Chen, I have one question for you. On that day, when you jumped, did you think about me? Chapter 2289 A Loathsome Guest Comes to the Netherworld Translator Born to be Long Chen was first startled by this question, but he then nodded. Seeing him nod, ripples of emotions appeared in Mi and Kangayu's eyes. She actually leaned against his neck and wrapped her arms around his waist. Tell me, how much were you thinking about me and how much were you thinking about her? Asked Mi and Kangayu. Her eyes closed. Long Chen shook his head. I wasn't thinking that much. All I was thinking was that I couldn't let either of you die. I had to save both of you. Both of you are my women. And if either one of you died, I'd be in enough pain to die. This time, Long Chen had no intention of shaking her emotions. He was telling the truth. If me and Kangayu died, Len Yuian would die with her. Furthermore, he had always felt guilty toward me and Kangayu, as well as another unclear emotion. Long Chen. Kiss me. Me and Kangayu suddenly turned red and looked up at Long Chen. There were still some tears on her face. Although she looked the same as Len Yuian, Long Chen could clearly feel her inner heart. At this moment, she was not a god. She had thrown away all her pretenses, becoming a girl needing love. The two of them immersed themselves in each other. Me and Kangayu's black robes transformed into black runes that formed a tent around the two of them. For the first time, Long Chen felt a warm feeling. Me and Kangaya wasn't being forceful like Len Yuian. Instead, she was deferring to Long Chen. After their happy time together, Long Chen lay on the ground, an arm around Me and Kangaya's waist. Are you afraid of me running off? Me and Kangaya smiled lightly, lying against his chest like a cat. I feel like I'm dreaming. Once I wake up, the dream might be gone, sighed Long Chen. He didn't feel like this was real. It truly does feel like a dream. Gods also dream, asked Long Chen curiously. Weren't you the one who said that sometimes gods and mortals are the same? Me and Kangayu nuzzled into Long Chen's neck. Long Chen, thank you. You've allowed me to comprehend many things. However, aren't you worried that Len Yuian will have an opinion about this? What will she do if she finds out in the future? Her, let her find out, said Long Chen indifferently. Inside. He thought to himself that she had been the one to tell him to seduce her. Hold it. In the future? Aren't the two of you able to sense each other? Demanded Long Chen suddenly. Sense each other? How could that be possible? Although we were once one, in order to hide from me, she severed our bond, making our souls separate. We can't sense each other, said Mi and Kangayu. So, Len Yuian had scammed him. Long Chen suddenly realized that he had been duped. He sighed. Part angry and part happy. Just what was Len Yuian up to? Long Chen. Me and Kangayu started to say something but then shut her mouth. Never mind. What is it? Asked Long Chen. Don't ask. I don't want to bring you karma. But I should warn you that you possess something that has the power to destroy worlds. That kind of power might come from one thing. A certain cultivation technique. However, people with that kind of power always have troubled fates. Sometimes even rumbling suddenly rang out from heaven and earth. Me and Kangayu shut her mouth immediately and only then did the rumbling fade. Me and Kangayu looked at Long Chen. Long Chen was already dumbfounded. Not even a god could say it? Just what kind of karma was that? What did that karma stem from? The Nirvana scripture? The Nine Star Hegemon body art? The Primal Chaos Bead? Or the Azure Dragon Essence Blood? Some things can't be spoken. Even going in a roundabout manner has been sensed. I'm sure that you're smart enough to figure it out sooner or later, said Mi and Kangayu. She waved her hand, dispelling the black runes around them and revealing the clear sky. She held on to Long Chen warmly as they got up. Long Chen still felt like he was in a dream. Her change in attitude was somewhat unbelievable to him. Mi and Kangayu and Len Yuian were both arrogant and lofty people. Compared to Mi and Kangayu. Len Yuian was actually friendly. Due to being a ruler of the world, Mi and Kangayu had always given people an innate feeling of reverence. 
However, now, Long Chen felt that it was Mian Kang Gaiyu that was warmer and closer to him, while Len Yuian was the domineering aloof one. Do you know why Len Yuian likes control? Asked Mian Kang Gaiyu as if she could read his thoughts. Long Chen shook his head. It's because at the very start, when I split my soul to create her, I gave her my trace of goodness. I wanted to erase that bit of goodness, so I sent her into the corrupt path, having her face merciless slaughter. I hoped that her goodness would be destroyed within that despair and bloodiness. However, I was too foolish. Just as you said, a person consumed by their desires becomes blind. When Len Yuian awakened her bone sword, she already sensed my existence. As she grew, she noticed more and more things that were wrong. She began to search for opportunities to fight me. She hunted down the corrupt path's geniuses in hopes of finding a peerless genius who could grow along with her to fight against me. In the end, she found you, but then she ended up falling in love with you. Love also makes a person foolish. She was unwilling to draw you into our struggle and gave up on hunting you down. However, fate is difficult to control. In the end, the three of us were still tightly wound around each other. But Len Yuian started out as a fragment of myself that I split off. She was constantly in a weaker position. So she needs absolute control to make her feel safe. Said me and Kangayu. No wonder Len Yuian had done what she had done. She had always been trying to reverse the tides and gain control. A portal appeared. Me and Kangayu and Long Chen stepped inside. Reappearing on the top of the tower. The table and seats and even the wine jugs were still there. Me and Kangayu smiled. Do you wish to continue drinking and discussing the Tao? All that I said was just nonsense. I was just bragging. Kangayu, since we're now so close, can you tell me how my brothers and sisters are doing? This was the important question. He had been apart from the Dragonblood Legion for a long time now. He didn't know how they were. Don't worry. The first half of the Nether Passage path isn't dangerous. It's the second half. And then the final pass. A. Hey, why has someone come to the Nethergood Palace? Let's go take a look. Me and Kangayu pulled Long Chen away. The two of them entered the Nethergood Palace to see Len Yuian sitting on the Nethergood's throne. Gazing coldly at seven people in front of her. Her gaze was frighteningly chilly. The seven of them were startled when Long Chen and Me and Kangayu walked in. Their leader was a man in violet robes and a black crown. This man had black runes whirling within his eyes that seemed to contain their own cosmos. Black Chi enveloped him, making him look like an emperor of darkness. Just standing there, he was extremely imposing. A mortal? Where did he come from? Barked that man. His voice was like thunder, and Long Chen felt like his soul would be torn apart. Me and Kangayu placed a hand on his back, and the feeling faded. Long Chen's expression gradually returned to normal. This was another god? Long Chen guessed he was someone on the same level as a Nithurgod. He even had a similar aura to a Nithurgod. It's not important where he's from. What's important is, what does it have to do with you? Sneered me and Kangayu. You, you violated the laws of the netherworld to pick someone out of the human's nether passage path. The man furiously pointed at Long Chen. What does it have to do with you? Repeated me and Kangayu indifferently. You. The man turned dark faced. He looked from me and Kangayu to Len Yuian, and then finally Long Chen. This time, Long Chen saw a hint of jealousy. Crazy jealousy. Long Chen suddenly understood. Just at that moment, Len Yuian announced Hong Ye Oiang, I will not be accepting your proposal, so you can go now. The man called Hong Ye Oiang angrily said, Just which one of you is the true body? Which one of you has the authority to make decisions? You don't need to worry about it. In any case, there's no need to discuss your proposal any longer. Don't waste everyone's precious time, said Len Yuian coldly. What about you? Hong Ye Oiang turned to Me and Kangayu. Me and Kangayu held Long Chen's hand, indifferently saying, Her opinions are my opinions. You should go. Otherwise, today, my Kangayu Netherworld will become forbidden land for you. If you provoke me, don't blame me for becoming hostile. Seeing me and Kangayu holding Long Chen's hand, Hong Ye Oiang's eyes turned scarlet like a furious lion. Me and Kangayu, you don't know kindness when you see it. Hong Ye Oiang let out a furious roar that shook the palace. His figure flashed, 
and he appeared in front of Long Chen. His hand reached out to his throat. However, before he could touch Long Chen, Len Yuian raised her hand. The Nathurgut Order appeared, and a ray of light bound Hong Yeo Yang. The restrictions of the laws of the netherworld made him unable to move. Without even thinking about it, Long Chen slapped Hong Yeo Yang in the face. You shameless old thing. Did I ever provoke you? Chapter 2290 Returning to the Nether Passage Path Translator Born to be Long Chen's slap only made Hong Yeo Yang's head turn, while Long Chen's own hand ended up racked by piercing pain. Me and Kang Gyu and Len Yuian were both startled. Long Chen had attacked so quickly that even they hadn't been able to react. Courting death, being slapped by a mortal enraged Hong Yeo Yang. The black chi around him surged violently as he attempted to break Len Yuian's bindings. Seeing that he was unable to escape though and how much he wanted to tear him apart. Long Chen decided that one slap wasn't enough. He slapped him 36 times in a row. Perhaps he might be lacking in other regards. But when it came to face slapping, no one would dare to claim that they were above him. This big face of Hong Yeo Yang's was begging to be slapped, free of charge. The other six people who had come with Hong Yeo Yang immediately roared and charged forward. As a result, Len Yu Yuian waved her hand, summoning a barrier of light that knocked them back. You're still acting so arrogantly within my palace? Do you think I don't dare to kill you? Sneered Len Yuian. The void trembled. Divine light streamed out of her throne, condensing into nine rainbow-colored swords pointed at Hong Yeo Yang. Upon seeing those swords, Hong Yeo Yang's expression changed. I'm a Nathurga just like you. I refuse to believe you dare to kill me. As for the others he had brought with him, they were too terrified to say a word. The sinister killing intent coming from those swords filled the air. You're right. I can't kill you. But half killing you is all right. Len Yuian waved the Nathurgut order. The chains binding Hong Yeo Yang slowly faded. Hong Yeo Yang looked at Long Chen who was just a foot away. But he didn't dare to attack. Those nine swords were locked onto him. If he attacked, they would automatically pierce him. Fine. Count yourself vicious. Hong Yeo Yang's gaze swept across them a vein bulging on his forehead. Just wait. You'll regret this day. Especially you, you little mortal. I'll make you regret ever coming to this world. Hong Yeo Yang pointed at Long Chen, shaking with rage. He couldn't even express his hatred with words. Did your parents never teach you not to point at others? It's very rude. Who do you think you are if you were born in the same era as me? In the same world, I teach you a real lesson. You'd quiver whenever you saw me sneered Long Chen. He knew that both me and Kang Gyu and this fellow were existences that had lived for countless years. He couldn't beat him now, but if they were the same age in the same realm, he'd crush him with just a palm. Good. You're quite arrogant. Just wait. Hong Yeo Yang smiled cruelly. He turned, bringing his people away. Watching them leave, Long Chen had an odd expression. Who was that idiot? After living so many years, is this how gods live? If they were on the Martial Heaven continent, they would have the crap beaten out of them. Len Yuian and Mian Kangayu smiled. Mian Kangayu said, he truly does have something wrong with his brain. However, he has a very good background. So even if he's brainless, others can't do anything to him. Long Chen, time's about up. You should return to the Nether Passage path. Come and give me a kiss. Len Yuian beckoned to him with her fingers. Long Chen warily asked. Are you conning me? What? Are you afraid she'll get jealous? Asked Len Yuian. Long Chen looked at me and Kang Gyu. She smiled in reply. And only then did Long Chen walk over. As soon as he got close, Len Yuian's smile suddenly vanished and she shouted. Long Chen, you dared to show disloyalty to me. This is your punishment. Len Yuian slammed her palm into Long Chen's chest. He felt a burst of pain as if hot iron had been stamped onto his chest. Fuck, you really before Long Chen could finish speaking, a portal appeared behind him, and he was devoured. His voice was cut off. The Nathurgood Palace returned to quiet, with only Len Yuian and Mi and Kang Gyu present. After a long time, Mi and Kang Gyu sighed. You're smart to use such a method to help him. Len Yuian smiled faintly. What? Are you sad he's gone? Me and Kangaya was silent for a long time once more before slowly nodding. Thank you. 
What are you thanking me for? Thank you for allowing me to learn what love is. My heart has been opened so you've decided to start your revenge now? Otherwise, why would you bring Long Chen with you to antagonize Hong Yeo Yang? Is that despicable? Did I pull Long Chen into my karma? Asked me in Kangyu. Len Yuyan sat back down on her throne and stretched lazily. No, let me put it to you this way. During the days that we fought, I finally comprehended something. What is that? I obtained the evil dragon's soul essence before fighting against you on the martial heaven continent. On the surface, it appears as if Long Chen has been infected by my karma. However, later, when I thought about it, I realized I was the one who fell into his karma. Now you've fallen in as well. Long Chen's identity is very mysterious. He has never mentioned his origins to anyone, and his cultivation art especially involves even greater karma. So you don't need to feel any guilt. Long Chen taught me that to be able to die with the person you love is a kind of blessing. Our lives are now inextricably wrapped around each other. Since we've already fallen within that karma, we don't need to worry about this. We can join forces to go against our joint enemies. You. You actually knew. Me and Kangyu looked at Len Yuyan with disbelief. Long Chen is my man. When you opened your heart to him and he became your man as well. Your sealed soul opened to me. I saw all your secrets. Kangyu. Our man has become the bridge reconnecting our god energy. Our minds. And our souls. You are me. I am you. We should be working together for our goals. Said Len Yuyan. Walking over to me and Kangyu. Me and Kangyu looked at Len Yuyan. A smile of relief gradually appeared on her face. It feels good having someone to share my burden. With your help, I'm much more confident it's not just me. Long Chen will help you as well, promised Len Yuyan. Him, me and Kangyu was unconvinced. Don't underestimate him. The martial heaven continent's heaven defier is also the heaven defier born by the core of the star field. A few years is just a flash for us, but it's enough for Long Chen to undergo a shocking transformation. In the future, it won't just be us. Long Chen will be there as well, said Len Yuyan profoundly. Long Chen fell from the void, smashing into the ground like a meteorite and leaving a hole. At the same time, he heard many familiar voices. The impact from his fall left him dizzy, like the stars were spinning around him. Long Chen. The familiar voices made him open his eyes. He saw Men Ki's shocked face. He also saw Chu Yao, Tang Wanur, Yi Zhikyu, Guo Ran, and the others. Boss, where did you go? Asked Guo Ran. We were worried about you. They had entered the gates of hell together, but then they had found that Long Chen was gone. That had naturally made them feel extremely anxious. But after going through the gates, they couldn't go back. There was only a straight way in front of them. With every step forward they took, the space behind them solidified. They couldn't go back. Their hope was that Long Chen had gone off ahead to scout the path, but that wasn't too likely. With Long Chen's character, he wouldn't do such a thing, especially not without telling them first. Eventually, they were forced to continue pressing onward while still searching for Long Chen. You damn fool, where did you run off to? We were all worried sick, demanded Tang Wanner with red and eyes. She put on a tough exterior, but she had the weakest heart inside. She had been the one most worried about Long Chen. Her imagination had been going crazy as she worried about him. I don't know either. I was drawn into a large palace. Inside, there were two demons. I fought with them for a long time before finally subduing them and running out, said Long Chen. Thanks to Men Chi and the others. He managed to get up, Novaloon.com within the Nithurgud Palace. The two of them chuckled. Long Chen actually called them two demons, and even said that he had subdued them. Do you see? Are you still sad about him leaving? I told you, this person needs a beating every few days or he'll do something stupid. If you pamper him, he'll ascend the heavens, and not in a good way. Len Yuyan snorted coldly while me and Kangyu laughed. The ground was embedded with giant rocks. Long Chen had smashed a giant hole through one of those rocks. The other life forms in the surroundings were frightened away by this scene. Oh, Long Chen, what's that on your chest? Men Chi suddenly noticed something. Chapter 2291 Len Yuyan's Warning Translator Born to be there was a diagram on Long Chen's chest. It looked to be a handprint. 
There were many lines just like a real hand had left a brand. The handprint was very clear at the start, but then began to slowly fade until it vanished. Why did those lines look so strange? Didn't they seem like a labyrinth? In my years of learning how to read the palms of ladies from Boss, I've never seen such a thing, said Guo Ran curiously. Big Brother Long Chen, you know how to palm read? Why do you only do it for ladies? Dong Mingyu giggled. Guo Ran immediately realized he had misspoken. He glanced at Long Chen, only to see a murderous gaze that made him hastily retreat. Long Chen, the path ahead splits into five. We were still deciding which way to go when you fell from the sky. You should decide. Meng Chi changed the conversation, pointing at the fork. Long Chen looked at the path ahead. Other life forms were also at the fork, pondering which path they should take. No one knew where these paths led, and once they decided, they couldn't go back. Long Chen stood and asked Meng Chi and the others what had happened. Meng Chi said that they had come to forks before, but they had always been two way forks. They had randomly chosen every time, and sometimes the path they took would be very easy, while sometimes they would face a hail of fire, lightning, or ice. There were all kinds of attacks that manifested. Those attacks were spiritual attacks targeting the soul, and their weapons couldn't help them against such attacks. Fortunately, while the attacks hurt their Yuan spirits, they weren't fatal. Furthermore, after enduring those attacks, they sensed a mysterious energy strengthening their Yuan spirits. Most likely, this was a kind of trial in the netherworld. However, the further they went, the stronger the attacks grew. Once, Guo Ran had almost died to a flame arrow. Later on, they realized that each fork had one easy path and one hard path. However, none of them could tell which was which. They had seen many life forms perish along the way. The handprint left on his chest appeared in Long Chen's mind. Had Len Yuian left him a map? He waved his hand, indicating for them not to rush. The lines of the handprint appeared in his mind. Len Yuian really did leave me a map. Only this place splits in five. The color is a gradient, most likely indicating difficulty. In the end, the left and right paths converge. That place should be the exit. But what does that black and white mark mean? After memorizing what he needed to know, Long Chen pointed. The middle path. He led everyone down the middle path. This was also the path that most of the other life forms chose. Within the palace, Mian Kangyu frowned at the scene she was seeing on the holders of evil. Did Long Chen not understand? Len Yuian smiled. No, you don't understand Long Chen. Oh, you were only with him once, while I did it with him many times. That's why I understand him better Len Yuian chuckled, causing Mian Kangyu to blush. Even if Len Yuian was her other self, she wasn't used to such words. Ha ha ha, the great Nithurgut is blushing? Is being with the one you love something embarrassing laughed Len Yuian. Let's not talk about that. If Long Chen does understand, why would he make that choice? Mian Kangyu refused to talk about that subject. Len Yuian became serious. Long Chen isn't someone you can control. Even if he knows the answer to the riddle, he'll test out other possibilities to overthrow the original answer. He does not believe there is only one answer. I'm sure he understood the layout of the Nether Passage path, but he has his own way of thinking. He won't follow the path that I indicated. This fellow chose the middle difficulty of the five paths, most likely to test it. He'll definitely show us an interesting, stubborn show. Just at this moment, Long Chen and the others entered the middle path. As Meng Chi had explained, the space behind them condensed so that they couldn't look back. After half an incense stick's worth of time, Meng Chi suddenly cried out, Long Chen, divine punishment from the heavenly deos is coming. Long Chen nodded, raising his hand to tell everyone to slow down. He then walked to the ground ahead of them. After just a few steps, a bolt of lightning crashed down from the sky piercing toward his head like a sword. Long Chen unleashed a punch, blowing that lightning away. It transformed into runes and dissipated. Long Chen grabbed some of those runes but quickly tossed them out. He had been planning on giving these runes to Lai Long to feed on. But Lai Long said that this was Yun Lighting, while it was Yang Lightning. The opposing elements between them made it so that Lai Long couldn't absorb it. Hence, Long Chen tossed it away. The lightning here deviates toward the yin side. 
It doesn't harm the physical body or soul. Instead, it targets the will, creating illusions. However, considering everyone's will, this level of lightning shouldn't be anything. Let's go. Long Chen started walking forward, allowing more bolts of lightning to crash down and strike him. The Dragonblood warriors had powerful wills, but they weren't so reckless. They protected their heads as they followed. Although they were currently just Yuan spirits, the pain was the same as if they were on the Martial Heaven continent. When struck by the lightning, they felt like their bodies would be torn apart. However, with Long Chen's explanation, they found that this pain wasn't true pain but a misperception. If they were tricked by this pain, it would easily lead to illusions. Fortunately, Long Chen was present. He was the core of the Dragonblood Legion. Just seeing him invigorated the Dragonblood Legion. Even Guo Ran felt confident once more. Although he cried out miserably from the pain, he wasn't afraid. As they were walking, suddenly, one of the life forms ahead of them exploded into bloody mist, making them all jump. Following the first life form, the nearby life forms also exploded. That was a horrifying sight. It's nothing to be afraid of. Some people's wills aren't strong enough. When the illusions fill their minds, they are led to detonate as if they are fighting unbeatable enemies or experiencing unbearable pain, said Long Chen. Not all life forms had such powerful wills. Even among these experts of myriad worlds, the Dragonblood Legion was outstanding. Many of these experts ended up having holes appear within their hearts when they saw the experts around them die, creating a chain reaction. Long Chen continued forward and passed one human-shaped life form with violet hair. He was shouting something indecipherable, and his eyes were red. Long Chen kicked him in the butt, sending him flying far away. When he finally crawled up from the ground, he kowtowed to Long Chen three times before continuing onward. He had been on the verge of being lost within the illusions. Long Chen's kick had returned him to reality and saved his life. Guo Ran did the same thing as Long Chen, kicking someone who was standing motionless on the path. As a result, that person angrily gestured and shouted at him, seeming to be cursing him. Hey, what's up? I just saved your life. All right? You don't seem very grateful, shouted Guo Ran back. You interrupted his comprehension. If we didn't outnumber him, he'd probably be beating you up right now, said Long Chen irritably. Long Chen had seen it clearly. That life form had had their eyes closed in meditation while holding one of the lightning runes. Perhaps their core energy was related to this kind of lightning. As a result, Guo Ran's interruption had broken the rune. Most likely, that life form already had an urge to kill him. Fine. Sorry brother. You keep meditating. We'll go first. Guo Ran hastily plastered on an apologetic smile. That life form might not understand Guo Ran's words, but Guo Ran's actions and tone gave them a general understanding, and they didn't say anything more. Boss. Most of these life forms are human. Doesn't that mean that our human race is the strongest? Asked Guo Ran. That's not necessarily true. Many of them might have only taken temporary human form because their original bodies are not as close to the heavenly deos. In this place, we have no idea, said Long Chen. Then doesn't that also indicate that the human race is the strongest? But why are there so many humans on the Martial Heaven continent willing to lick the feet of the ancient races and the Xuan beasts? Asked Guo Ran. They're slaves. Long Chen was indifferent to this question. They had finally reached the end of this fork. And up ahead, the path once more split. This time into six. The right one. Long Chen pointed. He knew that the path on the right was the most difficult one. Chapter 2292 Walking the Path Untrodden Translator Born to be Long Chen knew from Len Yuan's map that the previous fork had been split between five difficulties. The middle one was not easy but also not hard. However, this time, he picked the most difficult path. Len Yuan was correct. Long Chen wouldn't pick the simplest path. He chose the most difficult one. He had only taken the medium path the first time to get a general understanding of just how difficult it was. With that estimate, he directly challenged the most difficult path. Very few life forms were present on the path he chose. Due to so many forks along the way, most of the life forms were scattered throughout the paths. When the Dragonblood warriors entered this path, all their expressions changed. 
The smell of blood hung in the air. That feeling was very familiar to them. It was the air of the dead. They could sense the unwillingness of the lives that had ended prematurely here. Although that feeling was present on the previous paths, it was dozens of times stronger here. It gave them goosebumps. Boss, did you take us the wrong way? Asked Guo Ran worriedly. His cultivator's intuition was telling him that the danger had just leaped to a point where his little life could be lost at any moment. Don't worry, this is definitely the right one. It is the most difficult of the six paths, confirmed Long Chen. Ah, Guo Ran and the others turned green. Their boss had actually intentionally brought them to such a place. Long Chen smiled. Don't be afraid. Worst case, we all die together. Think about it. When have we ever walked a path that wasn't full of danger and difficulties? Whether we fought our enemies or heavenly tribulation, wasn't it always a walk with death? The netherworld is also just another trial. It has its own laws. The strong live, while the weak die. We are strong because we don't give up any chance to get stronger. It is precisely because we dare to risk our lives that we are able to live with dignity even within the dangerous swamp known as the Martial Heaven Continent. Don't be afraid of the netherworld. Just remember that this is a trial that we must charge through. Because we are the Dragonblood Legion. We are an unrivaled existence in this world. I want to become the strongest. 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 The Dragonblood Warriors had their hot blood ignited by Long Chen. Their original talent hadn't been high. It was thanks to Long Chen's resources that they had grown. However, those resources were just the foundation for their growth. The reason they could grow to their current position was due to constantly pushing themselves to the brink of death to get stronger. Now that Long Chen brought it up again, they thought of their countless bloody battles, the countless dangers they had barely survived, the countless brushes against the god of death. Their success wasn't a coincidence. It was inevitable. In the Martial Heaven continent, who dared to be as crazy as them? They knew that they were following a madman, a madman leading them to do the world's craziest things. It was precisely due to this that they had their current position. For others, no matter how crazy they were, they still had to be deferential to the merciless laws of the netherworld. However, to Long Chen, even those laws couldn't change who he was. His craziness hadn't changed. Now the rest of the Dragonblood warriors followed his craziness. Who cares about some damn netherworld? Even if the netherworld's god came, they would only be fit to carry boss's shoes. Brothers, charge forward together with boss, shouted Guo Ran. Cough, that's bragging a bit too hard. I've always had a special spot for the nethergood in my heart. Don't say such a thing, said Long Chen hastily. Was Guo Ran born to con him? Long Chen grumbled inside. Me and Kang Yu and Len Yu Ian were definitely watching what was going on here. Sharpen your minds. Brothers, let's go. The Dragonblood Legion's target is the strongest trial. Long Chen walked out ahead of everyone. Space twisted. Flame chains whirled out of the void like tentacles, enveloping Long Chen. Long Chen was suddenly torn apart by the chains and exploded into blood. Long Chen, Meng Chi, Chu Yao, Tang Wanur, and Cloud all let out heart-rending screams and charged over. Meng Chi rapidly formed hand seals seeking to restore Long Chen's torn soul. Everyone else was too stunned to even move. Their boss had been torn apart? Hey, what are you all doing? The void suddenly twisted, revealing Long Chen still standing in his original location. He was waving over to them. Long Chen, you're not dead. Tang Wanner held on to Long Chen tightly, her tears turning into relieved laughter. Meng Chi and the others were the same. They really had thought that he had died. Long Chen. What happened? Asked Meng Chi as she wiped away her tears. Nothing? I was just testing the power of the flame chains. Then I heard you all shouting. What happened to you? Long Chen also didn't understand. After a brief explanation, Long Chen realized what had happened. So these are flames of the heart. You will see what you fear the most. It seemed that this trial was similar to the previous trial. However, the last trial was something that slowly encroached upon the soul. As long as you were on guard, it was easy to defend against. But this time, things had happened suddenly. It had been so real that they hadn't been able to tell the illusion from reality, throwing their hearts into chaos. How dangerous. 
If you hadn't appeared soon enough, Big Sister Meng Chi would have forcibly condensed your soul back. Then she might have lost her life too, said Tang Wan'er worriedly. At that time, Meng Chi hadn't been thinking. There had only been the slightest hope, but she had still been about to throw her life away for it. Condensing Long Chen's soul again would have cost her most of her Yuan spirit. Long Chen gave Meng Chi a tight hug to comfort her. He said, Everyone, you've now experienced just how powerful this trial is. Any carelessness can result in death. You don't just need to have confidence in yourself, but you also have to have confidence in others. Other experts only had confidence in themselves. As for the Dragonblood warriors, while they trusted each other, being thrown into such a mental state without any preparations could still cause them trouble. Boss, we understand, said Gu Yang and the others. Their previous arrogance had received a sharp slap from the Nether Passage Path's laws. Good. I'll go on ahead once more. Be careful. Long Chen stepped forward. Flame chains shot out of the void, piercing toward him. Long Chen snorted. Flames appeared on his own fist, and he smashed apart the chains. However, Meng Chi and the others saw Long Chen being attacked and killed again. Everyone advanced into the region that he was in. Flames chains shot out at them, and they blocked them. As a result, they saw the people beside them being killed by the flame chains. Their flesh was torn apart. These visions were incredibly lifelike. It felt like reality, but after the first wave, they found that the people beside them were still alive. However, they were all pale. Perhaps they weren't afraid of death, but they couldn't accept seeing their brothers die in front of them. They had seen everyone other than themselves die. That was a vision that sparked despair. Now they had personally experienced why some of the previous life forms had self-detonated. It was their own way to release themselves from that despair. Without the warning from Long Chen, they didn't know if they would be able to last. But after each wave of mental attacks, their confidence grew. The flame chains filled the surroundings with fire. It was like a constant burning of their souls. It was unbearable, yet they had no choice but to bear it. The curious thing though was that Guo Ran, the one with the weakest will, was able to endure it every time and seemed to be doing it very easily. Guo Ran, when did your will become so powerful? Asked Gu Yang. He was standing beside Guo Ran, originally with the intent of protecting him, only to find that there was no need to do so. Are you joking? After bathing in the radiance of my boss every day, Hearing my boss's teachings, how could my will not be strong? It's just that as a person, I am very low-key. This little bit of improvement isn't anything worth bragging about, said Guo Ran bashfully without concealing the pleased expression in his eyes. Don't listen to his bragging. This trial adjusts itself based on the will of each person. People without a strong will are under less pressure. After all, this trial isn't designed to be a path of death, said Long Chen. But even if the pressure is lighter, it can't be this easy, grumble Gu Yang. Perhaps his will is so weak that not even the laws of this place can sense it. Long Chen shrugged. Everyone looked over at Guo Ran, their expressions growing odd. They finally reached the end of the path and arrived at a giant empty space. Countless life forms had gathered here. Ahead of them were nine paths. Chapter 2293 Half-Life Half-Death Bridge Translator Born to be many life forms had gathered in the area ahead, but those life forms no longer had their old arrogance and confidence from before entering the gates of hell. Without exception, they were all tense, and some of them were even quivering just by standing there. Clearly, they had gone through their own terrifying trials to reach here. They had personally witnessed countless other experts being killed. As a result, many of them felt lucky to be able to reach this point. In front of the laws of the Nether Passage path, they felt powerless, as if they were just randomly betting with their lives. One bad bet and they would die. Furthermore, they had no choice but to bet. Curious, why are there so many paths now? Wondered Meng Chi. Based on her observation, the sequence had gone from five forks to six forks. So there should be seven forks next. However, now there were nine. That represented a limit. Most likely. This was the final pass. Long Chen had an idea as to why. Because he had chosen the most difficult trial on the six-way fork. They had directly entered the ninth path. Based on his senses to the nine paths up ahead, there were only three that they could choose. 
the others had strange fluctuations expelling him. The options were the first, the fifth, and the ninth paths. One was the weakest, the other was in the middle, and the last was the strongest. The strangest thing is that we didn't see a single person from the Martial Heaven continent. Guo Ran looked around curiously. Xia Chen bumped him, indicating to be quiet. Long Chen had sat down and closed his eyes, meditating. Hence, Guo Ran shut his mouth. Within the Nethergood Palace, Miang Kangaya wondered, what is he thinking? Len Yuian shook her head. No one can ever tell what he's thinking. There are only three paths in front of him now, but all three end up at Half-Life Half-Death Bridge. Half of those who step foot onto it will die. Half will live. No matter how tough their lives are, half will still die there. I understand. With the Nethergood Order, you can help them pass. I'm fine with it, said me and Kangayu. But changing the laws like that is against the position of a Nethergood. Our vengeance will be forced to come to a stop. And I'll even receive a curse from the laws. So, no need to ask. You are me. I am you. Alone. You can't endure the curse. So I will also be affected. However, since we've chosen to bet on Long Chen, we should go all out. Whether we win or lose, let's bet, said Me and Kane, determined. Len Yuian smiled and didn't say anything. She clenched the Nethergood order, preparing to help Long Chen's group pass at the final juncture. Long Chen had his eyes closed in meditation for a long time. Men Chi and the others didn't wish to disturb him. They were familiar with him and knew that he was definitely calculating something. The other life forms in the surroundings made their choices one by one, entering their own paths. Their bodies vanished from sight. Out of nowhere, Long Chen suddenly coughed up a mouthful of blood making Men Chi and the others jump. Long Chen. Long Chen waved his hand, indicating that he was fine. He closed his eyes once more. Men Chi and the others looked at each other, not knowing why he would suddenly cough up blood. He hadn't been injured before. They could only keep standing watch. At the same time, they also focused on maintaining their peak condition. When they closed their eyes to meditate, they found a happy surprise. Their Yuan spirits were several times stronger compared to when they had entered the gates of hell. As expected, the stronger the trial inside the Nether Passage path, the greater the rewards. Even if their physical bodies were destroyed, at this rate, their Yuan spirits could survive on their own. Even without having advanced to the Nether Passage realm, they had grown much stronger. A powerful Yuan spirit increased the power of their magical arts. As a result, their total combat power had risen without them even being aware. In the face of the tough choice in front of them, countless life forms were still hesitating. This was why no one could carry out memories of this place. It was to prevent anyone from cheating. No matter who came here, they would have to rely on luck and power to survive. As life forms went by, more came. However, the Dragonblood warriors continued to just stand there. Quite a few life forms were simply watching just like them. They either hadn't made their preparations or were still thinking. Eventually, Long Chen opened his eyes and stood. Boss, can we move out? Long Chen's gaze swept over everyone. Brothers, we are facing a difficult problem. No matter which path we take, we will still end up arriving upon a bridge. That bridge kills half of those who walk on it no matter what. It has nothing to do with cultivation base. It is entirely luck. Just now, Long Chen had sent the energy of his Yuan spirit out to probe the paths ahead. As a result, the laws of this place had descended upon him, injuring him and making him cough up blood. However, he didn't give up. Activating the primal chaos bead, he assimilated the laws of this place. Using his spiritual strength, he probed the path ahead and saw Half-Life Half-Death Bridge. He had observed it for a long time. Therefore, he had seen countless life forms walk across it and die, allowing him to see the problem. In other words, only half the Dragonblood Warriors can pass? Unacceptable, roared Gu Yang. The Dragonblood Warriors were closer than brothers. They would rather die themselves than let the others die. Boss, is there no other way? Demanded Guo Ran. His tone was that of a question, but he knew that this was a law of the netherworld. No one could change it. There was no path back. They could only choose to go forward. In front of these laws, people were weak. They could only meekly lower their heads. Even if they didn't accept it, they had to. 
What else could they do? There is another way. With just that one statement, the dragon blood warriors were relieved and delighted. But his next words extinguished the flames burning inside their hearts. There is a way, but the odds of success are very low, said Long Chen. How low? We only have a 20% chance of surviving, said Long Chen solemnly. Everyone's hearts shook. 20%? That was too low. Does the dragon blood legion wish to live and die together? Long Chen looked over at everyone. Fuck. We'll risk it. The dragon blood legion can't exist without half its brothers. What would be the point of living? Boss, let's do it. Even a 1 in 10,000 chance would be worth it. Yes, boss, we have to do it. We've already walked across mountains of blades and seas of blood. Let's add this to our record too. Boss, let's not hesitate. Just direct us. We'll live together or die together. The dragon blood warrior shouted passionately. All right. Then let's flip the heavens. Seeing those fiery gazes, Long Chen also felt a heroic feeling. Let's go. Long Chen waved his hand, bringing everyone to the easiest path. Quite a few other life forms followed them. The mist covering the path was like a gaping maw devouring them. Long Chen led his people inside without hesitation. Half an incense sticks worth of time later, swords rained down from the sky. Evil Moon appeared in Long Chen's hands and he unleashed a giant black saber image. Divine Ring. Long Chen was starting to unleash his full power. When the Divine Ring appeared, the laws of the world twisted and tore. This was the end of the Nether Passage path, and the trial had grown incredibly powerful. These sharp swords contained various kinds of energy. Metal, wood, water, fire, earth, wind, lightning, light, dark. All kinds of energy were mixed together. When blocking the first kind of energy, the other kinds would pass through. Runes flashed through the air, falling like a rain of light. When they landed on people's bodies, it felt like they were being smelted by a furnace of 10,000 flames. Long Chen took the lead all on his own, shattering the strongest attacks. Xia Chen, endure it. Guo Ran let out a startled cry. He saw that Xia Chen looked to be on the verge of collapse. I, I'm fine. I can endure Xia Chen was pale, but he continued pressing on. As a formation master, he focused on study. He didn't have as much time to cultivate his body or soul. Seeing Xia Chen on the verge of collapse, Guo Ran carried him on his back as he pressed onward. Guo Ran was an anomaly. He was the only one whose will couldn't be sensed by the laws here. Perhaps his will was just too weak, so the attacks didn't bother him. However, for the others, Things were growing more difficult. It felt like their souls were about to be torn apart. If anyone felt despair, they would be doomed. This was the final trial of their will. Everyone, prepare yourselves. Charge through with me. Long Chen suddenly shouted. Stars appeared in his eyes, and white dragon scales covered his body. Split the heavens eight. Boom. Long Chen suddenly unleashed an attack that tore through the void, creating a giant hole in space. From that hole, they could see another path. Quick, run, shouted Long Chen, jumping in. Chapter 2294 Breaking the Lost Translator Born to be Long Chen's full power attack created a hole in the void that led to another path. The two paths were originally separated by a spatial barrier, but Long Chen had pierced through it and jumped through. The dragon blood warriors followed close on his heels. The hole quickly closed. But the dragon blood warriors were used to working together and had moved to the other path with more than enough time. The life forms that were on that path were badly shocked by their sudden appearance. They stared at the dragon blood warriors like they were monsters. The void began to rumble. Fragments of spastime flew, causing the world to twist. A terrifying pressure appeared, shaking people's hearts. The life forms on the path were too terrified to move. That pressure was targeted toward the Dragon Blood Legion. Long Chen's actions had clearly infuriated the laws of the Netherworld. Let's go, Long Chen shouted, ignoring the changes in the void. He started charging forward. Flashes of divine light descended as the entire world seemed to be attempting to kill Long Chen. The laws of the Netherworld did not possess their own sentience. Having confirmed that Long Chen was the one who had destroyed its laws. While the dragon blood warriors were just accessories to the crime, the majority of the attacks concentrated on Long Chen. Long Chen went all out, charging through the laws. 
The other life forms fled, afraid of being drawn into that tumultuous flood. Split the heavens eight. Long Chen once more unleashed a powerful attack that tore through the spatial barrier, revealing another path. Run. This time, there was no hesitation at all from the Dragonblood Legion. They charged through as soon as the hole appeared. Within the Nathurgood Palace, Mian Kangaya was in shock as she watched Long Chen. What is he doing? Has he gone insane? Look at Half-Life Half-Death Bridge. Len Yuian was looking in a different direction. With Len Yuian's reminder, Mian Kangaya looked over at the bridge through the holders of evil. Her eyes widened. What is going on? The bridge was slowly circulating with black and white light. As life forms passed, black and white ripples would appear to decide their fate. To decide who lived and who died. Half-Life Half-Death Bridge was the final part of the Nether Passage path. As well as the cruelest. Only by crossing this bridge was it possible to advance. No one could escape this bridge. The ripples along the bridge covered everyone that crossed it. However, right now, the bridge was undergoing an alarming change. The black and white ripples, which were originally following an orderly sequence, were growing chaotic. The entire bridge would sometimes go entirely black and then entirely white. It was shaking. The railings on the two sides blazed with light, seeming to be attempting to stabilize the bridge, but it was ineffective. Half-Life Half-Death Bridge is being affected by Long Chen. Me and Kangayu could barely believe it. As the god of the netherworld, she had never seen such a thing. This bridge was not something that she or anyone else was able to control. There had never been a life form causing such trouble like Long Chen. By breaking through the spatial barriers, the order of the nether passage path was thrown into chaos, affecting Half-Life Half-Death Bridge. Long Chen found a way to pass with everyone together, said Len Yuian. But how is that possible? The laws of the netherworld can't be destroyed, especially not by a mortal. Perhaps others can't, but you know that he is Long Chen. A heaven-defying existence Len Yuian was confident, but she then sighed. That fool Long Chen, he knew we wanted to help him and were willing to pay a steep price to do so. However, he didn't want to implicate us. So he decided to do things on his own. Len Yuian was more familiar with Long Chen's character. He was very prideful. He liked helping others and didn't require them to repay him. But he very rarely wanted to trouble others or accept their help. This was a perfect example. Len Yuian had already laid a path for him. But he refused to walk it. He wanted to walk his own path. The void rumbled and a giant bolt of lightning struck Long Chen. Long Chen slashed with his own thunder force, blowing apart the lightning. Long Chen was shocked by the power of this lightning. Li Long's pure yang element lightning was able to counter the lightning here very effectively, to the point of blocking 80 to 90 percent of its power. However, what got through was still difficult for Long Chen to endure. He felt like his soul was being torn. Long Chen faced the main attacks, while the dragon blood warriors were affected by the leftovers. They felt dizzy, like they might vomit. Boom. Long Chen stabbed through the void again. However, this time, his power was clearly a bit lacking. The hole he created wasn't big enough for everyone to pass at once. Boom. Fortunately, Long Chen was prepared and unleashed a second attack. The spatial hole was just starting to fuse back when it was torn open even wider. Just at this moment, another attack struck Long Chen, and even doing his best to defend. He coughed up blood and was knocked back. Long Chen had figured out the rhythm of this place. Every time he tore through the spatial barrier to another channel, the laws of this place would reset their attempt at killing him. Their first attack was always the easiest to block, while the second attack doubled the power, and the third attack doubled the power once more. It would continue until the target was destroyed. The only way to survive was to constantly switch paths. If he stopped, he would be killed. Long Chen had started from the weakest path. As he charged into the stronger paths, the spatial barriers grew harder to break, and the attacks he faced grew deadlier. By the time he reached the sixth path, an attack fell from the void before he even managed to step onto the ground. As a result, cracks appeared all over Long Chen's body, making the others jump. If the Yuan spirit shattered, it would signify death. Dragonblood cross slash, shouted Long Chen. The Dragonblood Warriors immediately summoned their Dragonblood Battle Armor and activated their manifestations. 
Their power surged toward him. Boom. Long Chen unleashed a far more powerful blow, instantly breaking the spatial barrier. Before the second attack could descend, he and the others had entered the next path. Miang Kangaya was shocked to find that the ripples on Half-Life Half-Death Bridge had actually ceased. However, after a few seconds, they began moving erratically once more. I understand. Miang Kangaya suddenly cried out. Long Chen is drawing all the energy of the Nether Passage path to fixing the destroyed spatial laws and killing the offender. By throwing the balance of power into disorder, he is able to make Half-Life Half-Death Bridge lose its effect for a short time. He wants to rush through it during that brief moment. What a crazy idea. But how did he understand these laws of the Nether Passage path? We didn't even know about this. Long Chen was just a mortal. How could he know secrets about the netherworld that even she didn't? In all her years being god of the netherworld, this was her first time seeing such a thing and the resulting consequences. If she didn't know, then Len Yuian couldn't possibly know either. So how had Long Chen known? Long Chen charged through the next two strongest barriers with the support of the Dragon Blood Legion. As he charged through the last one, he reached the entrance to Half-Life Half-Death Bridge. The bridge's runes had gone dark. It had lost all its effect. Long Chen and the others had just appeared within the ninth path when a giant sword condensed at the end and pierced toward him. This was the strongest attack so far. It was like all the power of the Nether Passage path had been concentrated into this attack to make sure that Long Chen and the others supporting him were killed. All of them were locked down by that power. Even though the bridge was right in front of them, they couldn't move. Evil Moon trembled in Long Chen's hands. Everyone, don't be afraid. All the power here targets the will. My strongest aspect is my will. Some insignificant laws of the netherworld think they can destroy me? I, Long Chen, am the ruler of the nine stars. Heaven and earth are within my palm. The stars are trampled beneath my feet. Gods and devils are only fit to crawl beneath my feet. A few little laws are nothing in my eyes. At that moment. It felt like Long Chen had become a different person. Even his way of talking had changed, possessing a new kind of arrogance. His pupils had become pitch black at some point, and he even seemed a bit deranged. It's here again. Evil Moon looked at Long Chen, seeing that old image. Evil Moon slashed out. This attack wasn't split the heavens. It was an ordinary slash, but a wild and indomitable will exploded out of it, causing the entire netherworld to shudder. Long Chen's saber landed on the giant sword, and a huge explosion rocked the path. The spatial barriers separating the paths were blown apart. As a result, Long Chen and the others were sent flying by that terrifying power. Chapter 2295 The Final Juncture Translator Born to be the immense power was like a tsunami throwing them into the air. They felt like their souls were being crushed. Their heads were blank. Quick. Run. Long Chen's voice sounded like it was coming from a great distance away, but it woke them from their semi-conscious state. Taking note of their surroundings once more, they saw that the void had been destroyed. Countless broken runes were whirling through the air. The nine paths were revealed to everyone, and at the end of all the paths was the bridge. Long Chen's saber had unleashed extraordinary power containing an invisible will that clashed against the laws of the Nether Passage path. Long Chen. When Meng Chi saw Long Chen, she let out a shocked cry. Both of Long Chen's arms had been destroyed by the laws, and his body was covered in cracks. He looked to be on the verge of shattering into a million pieces. Meng Chi grabbed Long Chen and pulled him along. In his current state, he couldn't receive any further impacts at all. The bridge's runes had gone completely dark. The Dragonblood warriors ran across it as fast as possible. If it was during normal times, they could reach the end in a single step, but they were affected by the laws of the netherworld and couldn't fly. The void behind them rumbled as the laws slowly restored themselves. The spatial barriers reformed. Faster, shouted Long Chen. When the barriers recovered, the laws of the bridge would receive energy and activate once more. At that time, half of the Dragonblood warriors would die. Long Chen had sent his spiritual strength through to this place before. He had used the primal chaos bead's power to run simulations of various possibilities. Long Chen didn't know how to read the future or anything. However, he found that by borrowing the power of the primal chaos bead, he was able to undergo a dreamlike simulation in this place. 
During his simulations, he had died countless times. In the end, he had found one possibility, but even then, he had still died. However, that was the only option he had found after so many simulations. There were always differences between reality and simulations, so that was his best bet. The Dragonblood warriors roared as they charged forward. Long Chen's arms slowly regrew, and the cracks on his body healed. There were no attacks coming for him from the bridge. All the energy of the Nether Passage path was focused on restoring the nine paths behind them. Boss, the runes are about to recover, shouted Guo Ran, just before charging into the last path. Long Chen had explained his goal of redirecting the energy of the bridge to make it lose effect. However, right now, the Dragonblood warriors had only gotten halfway across the bridge. At this speed, there was no way they could make it. Double Dragon Destruction Long Chen roared, sending Lai Long and Huo Long crashing against the nine paths behind them, once more tearing apart the laws that were healing. Attack together, shouted Long Chen. Everyone turned back to unleash their own attacks at the paths. The Dragonblood Warriors unleashed all their power, but they found that their attacks had far too little effect compared to Long Chen's attack. Is the difference really so great? The Dragonblood Warriors were startled. Long Chen had said that the loss here could only be torn apart by powerful wills. They had thought that their wills were already strong enough. On the Martial Heaven continent, they stood at the peak amongst all experts in this regard. However, in the face of the Netherworld's laws, their attacks were unable to cause any real damage. Fortunately, with their numbers, they were able to buy some time. Guo Ran unleashed two arrows and found that they didn't have any use. With a furious roar, he summoned his battle armor and slashed his saber. He found that his saber image faded before even reaching his target. No way. Guo Ran turned green. Was his will really so powerful? So his will was so weak that the loss here couldn't sense his existence. After Long Chen's double dragon destruction, the space back there was badly damaged once more, but the other's attacks only slowed down the recovery slightly. They couldn't tear it apart once more. Faster, everyone shouted. They had reached the last half of the bridge, but the space back there was starting to heal. They were still a bit too slow. Once the space healed, the runes on the bridge would activate killing half of them. All their previous efforts would be for nothing. How could this be? My intuition told me that this was the only option. The nine-star hegemon body art couldn't have tricked me. Long Chen had exhausted all his power and no longer possessed the energy to tear apart the spatial laws back there. Just like his final simulation, he was still missing something. They were only a few miles away from the end, but they weren't going to make it. There was a giant plaza at the end of the bridge, and there was a statue at the center of it. The statue was a winged monstrosity. It had its hands open in front of it. Moreover, there was a sphere rocking back and forth within its arms like a pendulum. The left hand was white as jade, while the right hand was black as ink. From Long Chen's previous observations, when the sphere was in the left hand, the white runes on the bridge would light up, and when the sphere swayed to the black hand, the black runes would light up. The two alternated. This was the crux upon which the bridge's laws were built. However, no one could reach it. Long Chen had tried to break it in his simulations. As a result, 36 giant hands had appeared in the void and smashed him to bits without him having any chance to resist. He had tried many times without being able to approach the statue. So he had given up and been forced to rely on his method of redirecting the energy to fix broken laws. These few miles separating them would only take half a step to cross on the Martial Heaven continent, but here, it was like a heavenly chasm separating them from success. A divine rune started to glow on the statue's head at this moment. The sphere started to move once more. Black and white lines spread throughout the bridge. In just a few seconds, the laws of Half-Life Half-Death Bridge would reactivate. No, the nine-star hegemon body art couldn't have tricked me. My intuition can't be wrong. This is the only way. I must be missing something. Long Chen started to panic. He tried to think of what he had missed. At that moment, his gaze fell upon Guo Ran who was unleashing exploding arrows at the statue. Those arrows were obliterated by the laws before they got close to the statue. Guo Ran, shouted Long Chen. Boss, I'm here. Guo Ran jumped and turned back. Guo Ran, 
You're the only one who can save everyone. Do as I say. Long Chen transmitted instructions to Guo Ran. He passed a long chain, and before Guo Ran could say anything, kicked him through the air. Guo Ran shot out like a cannonball, flying toward the statue. Long Chen had calculated his power perfectly, allowing Guo Ran to land within the left hand just as his momentum started to drop. Everyone was startled by this. They didn't know why Long Chen said that Guo Ran was the only one that could save them. When he saw that Guo Ran had landed safely within the left hand, Long Chen clenched his fists. His guess was right. The loss here couldn't sense Guo Ran. Long Chen was gambling on his intuition, or more accurately the intuition of the nine-star hegemon body art. He had absolute confidence in it, but this related to everyone's life and death, so he couldn't help being nervous. Quick, retreat, shouted Long Chen. The runes on the ground were starting to light up. If the light shone on them, their fates would be decided. Everyone hastily fell back. The light continued to spread closer and closer to them much faster than they were retreating. They would be caught up in just a few seconds. Guo Ran wrapped the chains around the oscillating sphere. When the sphere swayed into the white hand, Guo Ran tightened the chains and wrapped them around his wrist. Creaking sounds rang out as the sphere was suddenly locked in place and unable to return to the black hand. Success. Long Chen cried out excitedly. The black and white runes had been about to reach their feet, but now the black runes faded away leaving only the white runes shining. Run, shouted Long Chen. Everyone hastily rushed over the bridge. Just as they all reached the end of the bridge, an explosive sound came from the statue. The chains exploded, allowing the sphere to once more begin swaying back and forth between the black and white hands. Half-life half-death bridge's order was restored to normal, but the dragon blood legion had charged through. Ha ha ha. Did you see? All your lives were saved by me. I Guo Ran, am the savior of today. Guo Ran jumped off the bridge, exceptionally pleased with himself. Good job, you really are the savior. Long Chen would usually give Guo Ran a blow when he was acting so pleased with himself. But today, Long Chen patted him on the shoulder. Before this, everyone liked to tease Guo Ran for having such a weak will. During every tribulation or trial, he cried and begged to be let off. No one had thought that here. His weak will would be a trump card that saved the dragon blood legion. Just at this moment, rays of divine light descended from the sky, enveloping the dragon blood warriors. Chapter 2296 Sending off translator. Born to be within the Nithurgud palace, both me and Kangayu and Len Yuai inside with relief. Only now did me and Kangayu realize that her palms were covered in sweat. Ever since she had taken control of the netherworld. Her days had been dull and tasteless. In all those years, this was her first time being so nervous. Len Yuian wasn't much better off. She was clenching the Nithurgut order. If Long Chen had been in danger, she would have immediately activated it. She could have used the Nithurgut order to send them past the bridge right before they were devoured by the runes. If they had been devoured, even the Nithurgut order would have been powerless. Len Yuian looked at me and Kangayu and suddenly smiled. How was that? Wasn't it stimulating? I'm telling you, Long Chen's ability to court death is unrivaled within all the 10 million worlds. Being with him every day will be stimulating me and Kangayu also smiled. She sighed. Now I really believe you. He has his own fate. Our help is a disguised form of changing that fate. I wonder if he refused to accept it or if his fate refused to accept it. Looking back, it seems more like his own fate refused to accept our help. If you had used the Nithurgut order, they could have survived. But the Nether Passage Divine Light would not activate to cleanse their souls. That would leave behind a mark when they ascend. So Long Chen chose his own fate, and it was the right path. The crazy thing is that the crux upon which this fate turned was actually a fellow with ant-like willpower. I suppose the world is vast enough to contain all kinds of oddities thinking of how the one who had broken the system was actually Guo Ran. Me and Kangaya was especially amazed. Do you want to go see him? It might be several years before you see him again otherwise. Asked Len Yuian. Me and Kangaya looked at Long Chen within the image. Then she looked at Meng Chi, Chu Yao, and the others. She shook her head. Len Yuian asked. What? Are you jealous? A bit I suppose. I'm not used to this. 
Perhaps after having my goodness carved out, what remains becomes antisocial and selfish. Although our souls are one again after being with him, I'm still the original true body. Some things are just very difficult to change. Side me and Kangayu. He, the reason you're thinking like that is because of your position as a god. You don't want to share with a bunch of mortal girls. A dragon might share with another dragon, but not with some ants. That's fine. Our man will grow into someone on the same level as us very soon. He'll definitely be bringing everyone else along with him. You won't have such a feeling at that time. Chortled Len Yuian. Hopefully that day comes soon. I'm going into seclusion. I've obtained many things from Long Chen that I need to digest. I leave the netherworld to you. As for Long Chen, tell him. I miss him. Me and Kangayu blushed slightly before vanishing. Is it not over? The descent of the divine light startled Long Chen as well. However, it didn't harm them. Don't panic. This is the reward for passing the nether passage path. The power of the netherworld's life and death energy will purify your yuan spirits and imprint the laws of life, death, and samsara onto them. That way, you'll gradually come into contact with the life, death, and samsara realm. Suddenly, the void twisted and a black-dressed Len Yuian appeared. Divine light filled the air. The countless runes within heaven and earth flowed toward her, showing their subservience. This kind of phenomenon was truly the sight of a god descending upon the world. Len Yuian had been a peerless beauty before, but adding on her god energy, she made people feel an urge to prostrate themselves before her. However, seeing her made everyone else jump. They recognized her. How had she appeared here? Len Yuian's aura was completely different from before. With her god energy, they sensed that she could exterminate all life with just a thought. Although they had never seen a god before, they knew that the current Len Yuian was a god. Are you here to celebrate with us? Long Chen smiled. Len Yuian slowly descended from the sky. When she landed on the ground, countless divine runes lit up, forming a black carpet for her. Men Chi, Chu Yao, Tang Wanur, and Yi Zhikyu had complicated expressions as they looked at Len Yuian. They knew that Len Yuian's relationship with Long Chen was not ordinary but they had also never asked Long Chen about it. Even Tang Wan'er hadn't asked because Men Chi told her not to. If Long Chen wanted to tell them, he would tell them himself. If he didn't, then let him be. It would only embarrass him. The most unexpected thing though was that the former devil empress of the corrupt path had actually become the netherworld's god. They didn't know what to feel about that. They naturally felt lacking in front of her. After all, she was a god. There's no time for a celebration. I came not for you, but for my sisters. Len Yuian shook her head and ignored Long Chen, walking over to Men Chi and the others. Hearing that Len Yuian was actually calling them sisters, Men Chi and the others were shocked. They glanced at Long Chen suspiciously. Could it be? He, we're all one family. Yes, a family Long Chen smiled, but that smile was awkward in the face of their suspicious glances. Long Chen hadn't brought up Len Yuian to Men Chi and the others. The main reason was that there was no way to speak of those matters. By calling them sisters, Len Yuian was explicitly stating their relationship. Long Chen felt a burning sensation despite his thick skin. Standing in front of them, Len Yuian still made Men Chi and the others feel inferior. Despite all being peerless beauties, as a god, Len Yuian possessed her own heir. In the past, they had known Len Yuian to be beautiful, lofty, and merciless. Now, she inspired even greater respect. Our netherworld doesn't have many good gifts. I've only been able to prepare a few small things, so please accept them, said Len Yuian. Big sister Men Chi, as the first to meet Long Chen, you must naturally be called big sister. This necklace is something I specially prepared for you. She took out a necklace shining with all the colors of the rainbow. The divine light coming from it made the surroundings look like a fantasy world. There was a pendant on the necklace with a blue gemstone embedded into it. When Men Chi saw that blue gemstone, she let out a startled cry. Although she didn't recognize it, just by being near it, she could sense her own soul energy growing. This was a treasure capable of improving the speed of a soul cultivator. This necklace is made of the netherworld's nine revolution gold essence. Combined with the nether soul stone, 
it will allow you to cultivate your soul twice as fast and surpass the limit of your spiritual strength. Although Netherworld's objects lose most of their effect upon entering the Martial Heaven continent, it will still increase your cultivation speed immensely. Len Yuian personally placed the necklace over Men Qi's neck. With the necklace, Men Qi was enveloped in its light, making her seem like another god. Thank you, big sister. This was precisely what she needed to get stronger. Len Yuian smiled and turned to Chu Yao. When it comes to qualifications, perhaps everyone should call you big sister. After all, you were the first to get close to Long Chen. However, since Long Chen had a childhood marriage agreement with big sister Men Qi, she must be the biggest. But I will still call you big sister. I, I wouldn't dare to accept. Chu Yao was a bit nervous. To have a god call her big sister, she felt trepidation. There's nothing wrong about it. Big sister possesses a wood spirit body, so I will give you a wooden staff. Len Yuian took out a completely black staff. Is this firewood? Guo Ran mumbled to himself. Don't spout nonsense. This is a priceless treasure. It. I truly must thank big sister for this. Chu Ya received the staff and was first stunned before becoming wildly ecstatic. Len Yuian said, this was created from the moon Fusang tree's heart. It contains yin and yang energy. Blades cannot harm it. Water and fire cannot damage it. Most importantly, it is a divine item that will constantly grow as you nourish it. It will not be influenced by the martial heaven continent's laws. As long as you take care of it, it will give you a pleasant surprise. Thank you. Truly thank you. This is the best weapon I've ever had. Chu Yao was truly grateful. This gift was also something that she needed. One or, right? I'll call you little sister because you're just too cute. I've always really liked you. Len Yuian turned to smile at Tang Wan Er. Yes, thank you big sister. Tang Wan Er spoke surprisingly sweetly and cutely, making Long Chen speechless. Where was this meat girl when she spoke to him? Little sister, you're a wind element cultivator. What I'm giving you might be a bit dangerous. If you can't control it well, don't randomly use it. Len Yuian took out two crescent moon blades. Space rumbled. Chapter 2297 Rebirth After Death Translator Born to be the crescent moon blades were only three inches long when they first appeared. They were like two transparent knives. However, rumbling then rang out as divine energy flowed toward them. The terrifying wind energy formed a vortex around them and even the non-wind cultivators could sense a terrifying aura coming from them. Tang wan -er was instantly delighted by the two blades. Her eyes also became like two crescent moons from her smile. Thank you big sister, you really treat me well. This is my favorite design. Tang wan -er shouted excitedly like a child. I've seen you fight, so I know your style, said Len Yuian. I specifically hunted down a divine devil overlord within the Netherworld's wastelands, and I created this pair of crescent moon blades from its horns. It is also a divine item capable of growing along with you. There are three divine runes on it that you will be able to activate when you grow strong enough. They will unleash extremely powerful divine abilities. I heard from a certain person that little sister Wanner gets jealous easily, so I did everything I could to think of a good gift for you. I hope you like it. Tang Wanner immediately grew angry. Which gossiper said such a thing? Am I such a person? I like Big Sister a lot. I wish you could return with us to the Martial Heaven Continent although neither of them said anything explicitly. The gossiper was naturally Long Chen. Long Chen almost cried. Was he really such a person? This foolish girl forgot about her loyalty to her man as soon as she got a nice present. Tang Wanner received the two moon blades. She suddenly waved one of her hands, and the moon blade unleashed a wind blade straight at Long Chen. Long Chen instinctively dodged. The wind blade cut across his leg, leaving a giant slice. His life rod had almost been cut off, making Guo Ran and the others suck in a cold gasp of air. Long Chen's expression immediately darkened. Wan Er, what are you doing? Even if you want to suck up to her, you don't need to castrate me. Sorry, it wasn't on purpose. I didn't think that these crescent moon blades would be so amazing. I still can't control them. Tang Wan Er stuck her tongue out at him, a bit embarrassed. She had just been testing one, thinking that their power was under her control. As a result, as soon as she activated one, 
She injured Long Chen. Sister Wan'er, you should put those blades away. We're not boss, so we can't dodge that quickly. Guo Ran and the others felt a chill when Tang Wan'er turned around. Looking closely at the two blades, they all retreated Novaloon.com Little Sisters Hikyu, you already have a divine weapon, so I don't have a weapon for you. This ice spirit bracelet should suit you very well. It will purify your ice energy. Len Yuian gave Yi's Hikyu a bracelet, and ice crystals flowed within it. Glacier designs appeared and faded. This bracelet was clearly not ordinary. Yi's Hikyu was grateful, but she didn't say anything. She just nodded to express her thanks. Len Yuian also knew Yi's Hikyu's character, so she didn't take offense. She turned to Dong Mingyu. Little sister, you have Imputa's divine mark on you. It's not a good idea for me to give you anything for fear of invoking karma. I hope you won't blame me. No, just seeing what kind of person you are makes me happy enough. You are the greatest gift. Dong Mingyu smiled, her gaze a bit worshipful. She had always respected Len Yuian. When she had been a disciple of the corrupt path, she had always followed her own will. Dong Mingyu wished to also be like that one day, to do what she wanted to do. Len Yuian smiled. Really, if you put it like that, I'll feel ashamed of myself. Let me think, what can I give you? Len Yuian thought about it. Her eyes suddenly lit up. That's right. Imputa has a set of techniques called the Heavenly Desolation Extinction Art. Have you learned it? No, I've never heard of it. He, good. When you return to the Martial Heaven Continent, find your Divine Inheritance statue. Do this. Len Yuian leaned down and whispered into Dong Mingyu's ear. All right, I'll do it once I get back. Dong Mingyu's eyes were shining, but no one else knew what Len Yuian had said. Some secrets were naturally not for everyone to know. Perhaps they were afraid of karma, so no one asked. Meng Qi, Chu Yao, Tang Wan'er, Yi's Hikyu, and Dong Mingyu had all received gifts. However, that wasn't all. Even Cloud and Lu Ruian were given gifts. Len Yuian had printed a rune on each of their foreheads. Those runes activated the primordial runes within their bloodlines, allowing them to regain the power of their ancestors making the two of them incredibly grateful. Seeing that she stopped giving gifts there, Guo Ran grew uneasy. He respectfully said, This god elder sister-in-law, your generosity and kindness fills me with worship. Bathed in your divine light, I feel reborn. My life before this was gray, but your arrival has brought color get to the point, said Len Yuian indifferently. Ah, about that, is there a gift for this little brother? Asked Guo Ran expectantly. Len Yuian looked at him apologetically. There isn't. Your soul and will are too weak. Even if I gave you something, you wouldn't be able to merge it into your soul and bring it out. To tell the truth, you are so weak that it surpasses all expectations. Men Chi and the others laughed at his expression. Even the other Dragonblood warriors couldn't help shaking their heads. Their boss Guo Ran had truly received a grievous blow this time. But just now... I was the one who saved the entire Dragonblood Legion, cried out Guo Ran, refusing to accept this. Even his boss had been unable to do anything, but he had done it. That's also because of your boss. Those chains came from purgatory and are also not within the scope of the laws here. That's why you succeeded. All right, I'll tell you the truth. You are not suited for a soul divine item because it will cost you your life, said Len Yuian. What? Why? because your soul is too weak. A divine item of this level has its own will. If you merge it into your soul, you will not be able to be its master, and the divine item will take over your mind, turning you into its slave. That's why you can only use divine items that you create yourself. You can imprint them with your own will so that they won't devour you, explained Len Yuian. Guo Ran looked down gloomily. All right, boss also said the same thing. Now I'm convinced cough. Yuian, our relationship is so good, so while it's understandable that there's no gift for them, I'm sure that you won't have forgotten about me. At this time, Long Chen also made his move. If Len Yuian had prepared gifts for all of them, then it was natural that he should have one as well. Oh? Is our relationship really so good? Len Yuian looked at Long Chen questioningly. Long Chen was speechless. It wasn't as if he could say what had happened between them in front of Meng Qi and the others. Len Yuian laughed and leaned down to whisper into his ear. 
Didn't I already give you my gift? She winked suggestively, making Long Chen realize that she was talking about her other self. Me and Kangayu. I got that gift through my own ability, said Long Chen. If I hadn't built the bridge, could you have obtained her? Retorted Len Yuan. Fine, I admit you helped. Why didn't Kangayu come? She didn't want to send me off, asked Long Chen. Len Yuan said, she wanted to come, but the laws here only permit one god to descend at a time. So only I came. Oh, all right. Please tell her that I will think about her every day. Of course, you're included in that, said Long Chen. Just at that moment, startled cries rang out. Guo Ran had vanished. No need to panic. Guo Ran's Yuan spirit has been filled up with the energy of this blessing. So he has been sent back, said Len Yuan. During this time, the light from the sky was constantly nourishing their Yuan spirits. Following Guo Ran, other dragon blood warriors began to vanish one by one. At this moment, it was possible to see the difference between people's Yuan spirits. The weaker ones were sent away first. The stronger ones were being nourished longer. The dragon blood warriors gradually vanished. Then it was Gu Yang and the captains. Then even Men Qi and the others. In the end, only Long Chen and Len Yuan were left. Yuan, when people die, do they come to the land of the netherworld? Asked Long Chen. Yes, you are the god in control of the netherworld. Can you revive my old friends who died? Asked Long Chen. With Men Qi and the others gone, he could finally ask this question. Some dragon blood warriors had died, and there was also Lu Fang'er. Lu Fang'er was a constant ache in Long Chen and Men Qi's hearts. Sometimes when Men Qi was alone, she would stare out into space. Long Chen knew that she was thinking about her days with Lu Fang'er. Lu Fang'er had joked back then that she would marry Long Chen with Men Qi. She would be fine being just an extra, but in the Jiuli secret realm, she had sacrificed herself to save Men Qi. At that time, Yi's Hikyu had also died, but an expert had revived her because a seed of her soul had remained intact. Lu Fang'er's corpse remained, but her life had been lost forever. Long Chen's voice quivered when he asked this question. He looked at Len Yuan expectantly. Chapter 2298 Bandits Never Leave Empty-Handed Translator Born to be Len Yuan looked at Long Chen and shook her head. It is impossible. Long Chen felt like he had been struck by lightning. Why? Aren't you the god of the netherworld? Don't you control reincarnation? Long Chen. Len Yuan pressed a hand on his shoulder and sighed. You're thinking too simply. The netherworld isn't the netherworld within the stories of your martial heaven continent. Our netherworld is just one tiny region of the ten planar worlds. This place is just one of the millions of netherworlds. Even all the netherworlds added up together would only count as one of the planar worlds. It has its own laws, especially as it corresponds to the other worlds. The cycle of life and death connects the ten planar worlds. If you want to go against these laws, you'd have to be the master of the ten planar worlds. Len Yuan was helpless. The ten planar worlds had stopped being complete a long time ago. Perhaps even becoming the ruler of what remained wouldn't be enough. However, she couldn't bear to tell him that it was impossible. So she gave him some distant hope. Long Chen sighed deeply. Len Yuan wouldn't lie to him about this. It seemed that the stories were just stories. They were far from reality. So even gods have limits. Just as you said, mortals and gods are the same. It's just a difference in power. Being born in the sea of bitterness, once you cross it, you'll only be thrown into a bigger one with more dangers, said Len Yuan. What? Are you and Kang Gaiyu in danger? Long Chen noticed something in what she said. All life struggles. But talking about it now is meaningless. Time's about up. I was originally planning on giving you a chance to subdue me. But it doesn't seem like you're in the mood. Work hard at your cultivation. Once you reach that level, you can handle any problems you face. The key that unlocks all those problems is simply power, said Len Yuan. Just at this moment. Long Chen felt the world twist. A powerful suction force dragged him away from this world. Long Chen forcibly resisted that power and embraced Len Yuan. A rare warmth appeared on her face, and she kissed him on the cheek. My man, work hard. I look forward to the next time when you can subdue me. The void rumbled. Powerful spatial energy tore Long Chen away. 
and he felt the void shatter into countless pieces. Everything vanished. Len Yuian was gone, and Long Chen suddenly found himself standing outside two giant gates. They were the gates of hell. The Dragonblood warriors were standing outside as well. Seeing Long Chen arrive, Guo Ran immediately asked, Boss, how was it? Did you get anything good? Long Chen irritably said, Do you think your boss has as little integrity as you? Would I go around begging for other people's things? As long as you can get something good, what's wrong with begging? Even if I have to make a terrible scene and kowtow, it's not a loss, said Guo Ran righteously. Men Chi and the others had all obtained perfect gifts for themselves and were excitedly chatting about them. Even the ICE's Hikia was delighted. Guo Ran was incredibly jealous. However, he wasn't Long Chen's lover, so he had no share. He could only place all his hopes on Long Chen. If Long Chen got something good, he would definitely share. Long Chen had always shown special care for Guo Ran. Hearing that Long Chen had wasted so much time with Len Yuian without getting anything, he felt it was regretful. He grumbled that Long Chen refused to lower his head and beg for a treasure, making Long Chen have an urge to slap him. This fellow really was shameless, curious. Why are the gates of hell now devoid of anyone else? Only now did Long Chen take note that there were no other life forms here other than the Dragonblood Legion. It really is odd. There's also no nine-colored waterfall. Only a bridge leading to a transportation portal, said Gu Yang. While waiting for Long Chen, they had already scouted the terrain. This place was completely different from when they had entered. Long Chen looked at the majestic gates. At the top, they still said gates of hell. There couldn't be a mistake. However, when he carefully appraised them, he suddenly let out a cry. These gates aren't the ones we entered from. The nail that he had taken from the gates of hell had still been missing when they had come in. But now there wasn't a single nail missing. Long Chen guessed that there were two sets of gates. One leading in and one leading out. They were at the exit. So the nails were all intact. Looking at the perfectly intact gates. A strange light began to shine in Long Chen's eyes. Prompting Evil Moon to ask. Are you getting ideas toward the gates again? Evil Moon truly understood Long Chen. His spiritual fluctuations in particular could not escape it. Long Chen was getting greedy again. Are you joking? Long Chen shook his head. Turning to everyone, he said, let's go home. We don't know how many days have passed on the Martial Heaven continent. We should hurry. Everyone walked past toward the spatial portal. The Dragonblood warriors stepped through one by one. Runes enveloped them, and they became lethargic. It was like they were in water and their bodies rapidly floated up into the sky, vanishing within the darkness. Once everyone else had walked in, the only ones left were Guo Ran and Long Chen. He hadn't let him go. Boss, what is it? Asked Guo Ran. We didn't get a gift this time, so don't you think it'd be embarrassing if we left empty-handed? Long Chen chortled. Boss, you mean, bandits don't leave empty-handed. No matter what, we have to bring a little bit back. Come with me. Long Chen led Guo Ran back to the gates. Boss, are you thinking of tearing down the gates? Exclaimed Guo Ran. These gates were so big that he couldn't even imagine doing such a thing. You're overestimating your boss. I don't have that ability. Last time, I only got a nail and almost died in the process. Said Long Chen. Damn, so it really was you. Guo Ran's jaw dropped. Before he had joked that no one other than his boss would have dared to take the nail and now he found that it was true. Of course it was me. Otherwise, D. Long's clone would have killed me back then. This time, I don't want a nail. Last time, the nail lost most of its power after being brought into the Martial Heaven continent. It also felt like it withered after leaving the gates, like a tree being pulled from soil. A nail isn't useful enough to us. It probably wouldn't even be able to do anything to a fourth-step nether passage expert, said Long Chen. Then what are we stealing? A door bolt. Guo Ran looked at the gates. There were four door bolts on the gates. If they were taken, one smash of them could annihilate an area of life. Long Chen shook his head. Those bolts are definitely good, but we can't get them. There are locks stopping us. Moreover, the runes of the bolts are connected to the gates, and they'll also lose most of their power after leaving the gates. Then there's nothing else. Do you see those two door knockers? They're the faces of two ghosts. 
Those are definitely treasures, and their runes are their own bodies. Even once they leave the gates, they won't grow much weaker. They can be used as a shield or a weapon to smash people. There are two, and it just so happens that there are two of us. How does one each sound? Long Chen smiled wickedly. But can we really get them? It feels impossible, said Guo Ran. It won't be a problem. There are four rivets holding each knocker, but the runes of the rivets aren't very powerful. Most likely, they were only added to intimidate others and aren't actually used to protect the gates. It shouldn't be too hard to take them. Long Chen had already decided. Boss, what do you need me to do? Guo Ran made his resolution. If he really could get a knocker from the gates of hell, that would be enough for him to brag about for a lifetime. It was too tempting for him to resist. I'll give you all the purgatory chains I have. You just wrap them around the two knockers and leave the rest to me. I have quite a few chains, and you'll need to bring them up one by one since you can't use the power of your Yuan spirit without the gate sensing you. Long Chen passed the chains over to Guo Ran. Long Chen had obtained many chains from purgatory, but they weren't long enough, so he had linked many of them together. With the first chain, Guo Ran carefully crept up the gates of hell. He really was like an ant climbing them. The gates didn't react at all, as if they couldn't sense his existence. That made Long Chen relax. After binding the knockers with the chains, Guo Ran tied them all together with a giant rope to make sure the chains were bound as tightly as possible. All right, you can go, Guo Ran. Otherwise, when a certain fellow comes out to kill me, I won't be able to protect you said Long Chen. Chapter 2299 The Righteous Path's Decline Translator Born to be Guo Ran immediately fled. Once he was gone, Long Chen realized that there was only one rune left at the exit, when there had been many brilliant runes at the start. That made Long Chen realize that there were quotas for leaving. However many people arrived here was however many people could leave. Less than the max could leave, but not more. Seeing Guo Ran leave, Long Chen took a deep breath. Evil Moon took this moment to warn him. Long Chen, this thing may be infected with karma. Do you really want it? Seeing something good and not taking it isn't my style. As for karma, who can say whether it's good or bad? Since that's the case, let's just close our eyes and do it. Long Chen suddenly yanked on the chains. His divine ring appeared, as well as all of his battle armor. The ground shattered from how hard he pulled. Boom. One of the door knockers left the gates. As he had predicted, their connection to the gates was not very sturdy. However, just as it left the gates, Long Chen's hair stood on end. A terrifying sense of danger filled his heart. It was like a beast of death had locked onto him. Boom. Long Chen once more pulled, dragging out the second knocker. Get in. Activating the primal chaos bead. The two giant knockers were pulled into the primal chaos space. He then immediately fled. Suddenly, the gates opened and a giant head stretched out of it. The head was black and even bigger than the gates. Holy what the hell is that? Long Chen turned green. He couldn't see what exactly it was, but he saw a pair of giant eyes. Long Chen felt like his soul might flee his body. The head was so big that it couldn't squeeze any further out of the gates. It suddenly let out a furious roar. The void exploded, and Long Chen's soul almost dissipated. The head struggled to charge through the gates, and cracks actually started to appear all over them. It seems that I really did provoke a calamity. Long Chen was horrified to see that this monster was so powerful that it was even able to tear the gates of hell apart. Finally, the two gates exploded and a giant figure appeared. Bye. Long Chen charged through the exit, which immediately closed behind him. Even once Long Chen was gone, that giant figure continued to grow larger. It was so big that it was impossible to see its full form. However, it was possible to see that it had three heads. It was growing taller, and its back was swelling, as if it had been lying down and was now standing up. As it stood, countless chains thicker than mountains appeared on its back. The entire netherworld rocked. Within the Nethergood Palace, Len Yuian and Mian Kangayu, who had been preparing to go into seclusion, stared in shock as they watched what was going on. Me and Kangayu cried out, that's the three-headed heaven-devouring beast. It was suppressed and bound as soon as this netherworld was born. How could it have broken its seal? It was Long Chen. He tore off the seal, releasing it. 
that bastard. Since we didn't give him anything, he actually took things himself. He has just planted a gargantuan karma, said Len Yuian, her expression odd. The thick chains binding the beast were torn apart one by one. In the end, that giant monster was free. It roared several times, causing the entire netherworld to shake. Suddenly, a pair of sharp claws appeared and sliced open a giant hole in the void. It stepped into that opening, vanishing. This is troublesome. The three-headed heaven-devouring beast will throw the netherworld into chaos. It's going to return all its grievances at being caged a hundred times over. Mian Kangaya was grave. On the other hand, Len Yuian smiled. It has nothing to do with us. The nether passage path's laws are separate. We can't control them so it's not our responsibility. Furthermore, the more chaotic the netherworld grows, the more beneficial it is to us. Don't go into seclusion. People will come to investigate this matter soon, and we need to be prepared to face them. That fellow Hong Yeo Yang will definitely try to add oil to the fire as well. Mian Kangayu nodded. Now that the three-headed heaven-devouring beast had regained its freedom, this matter was entirely out of their control. Long Chen truly knew how to cause trouble. Long Chen opened his eyes. He stood, seeing that the other Dragonblood warriors were also awake in their bodies. They were examining themselves, sensing the changes they had undergone. Men Chi, Chu Yao, Tang Wanur, and the others had surprised expressions. Men Chi looked at the necklace on her neck in confusion. Chu Yao was the same, examining her new black staff with a puzzled expression. Everyone's memories regarding the Nether Passage path had vanished. They didn't know where these gifts had come from. Long Chen, what is going on? Did someone give you these gifts? Men Chi looked at Long Chen curiously. Those were given to you by Len Yuian, said Long Chen. Long Chen gave a simple explanation about what had happened in the Netherworld. After all, having accepted gifts from Len Yuian, they were already affected by her karma. There was no need to conceal it. By explaining what happened, he awakened the memories slumbering within them. They quickly remembered. Boss, did you succeed in the end? With their memories awakened, Guo Ran immediately asked about the door knockers. He, has your boss ever failed? Chortled Long Chen. He showed him the two door knockers. How are they so small? Their aura also isn't the same, said Guo Ran. It's due to the different laws between the netherworld and the martial heaven continent. You can research these knockers yourself. I already said, we'd split them one each. He, don't worry boss, I wouldn't dare to place my sights on your things, declared Guo Ran, seeing that everyone had returned safe and sound, with their Yuan spirits powered up to a new level. Long Chen felt a heavy weight fall from his heart noveloon.com when they came out of seclusion. They saw Yu Ziaokian waiting for them. She and the other experts of the original devil race had already advanced to the Nether Passage realm. Long Chen had wanted to undergo this journey with Yu Ziaokian, but Yu Zivan had said that the original devil race's people were different from the rest of the continent's life forms, and she couldn't go with them. Unexpectedly, Yu Ziaokian had been the first to break through. She had even undergone her tribulation to officially enter the Nether Passage realm. Long Chen the outside world's growing chaotic. Yu Ziaokian immediately brought up bad news. What is it? Asked Long Chen. It's been half a year. Many people think that you've run into a problem. Pill Valley, the ancient races, the corrupt path, the ancient family alliance, the Xuan beasts. They've all started making trouble for the righteous path again. Long Chen and the others were shocked to hear that half a year had passed here. They had felt it to only be a few days. In truth, what they didn't know was that they should have come out around the three-month mark like the majority of the continent. However, they had been delayed while accepting the divine light blessing at the end of the Nether Passage path. That was an extremely special place, and the time they had lost there while Len Yuian distributed gifts had distorted their time here. As a result, they had spent an extra three months away from the continent. Most of the other experts on the continent had already finished breaking through and finished their tribulations. The Pill Fairy, Tian Zizi, Kun Pengzi, Dongfang Yuyang, Zeman Shiangsheng, Nangong Zuayu, Bidang Rushuang, Yi Lingshan, Mo Nian, and Hu Feng had all come out of seclusion. The Martial Heaven Continent's power had soared. With their power on a new level, 
they had returned to the yin-yang world, with some of them even entering deeper into it, with everyone competing for the immemorial essence blood. Things had gone well at first, but then some conflicts occurred. The righteous path had many experts but few elites. They were often bullied and pushed aside. The majority of the time, the righteous disciples were forced to endure. After all, there was a sea sapphire, and they weren't as powerful. Their territory was forcibly occupied by others. As time passed, the others seemed to get used to this and often expelled the righteous experts from the battlefield so that they couldn't obtain any of the essence blood. The righteous disciples were infuriated. Yi Lingxin had personally reported this matter to the divine families, but the reply was that the bigger the mouth, the more meat they could eat. In other words, if they couldn't deal with it, they should leave the battles to others. This was a clear bias toward the other powers that were targeting the righteous path. It was only later when Yi Lingxin investigated that she realized that the ones guarding the outside of the Yun Yang world were no longer the warriors of the Eighth Legion. They had been replaced by the Seventh Legion. Yi Ben Chang, hearing that, Long Chen narrowed his eyes, killing intent surfacing within them. Chapter 2300 Pen Wanchen Translator Born to be unexpectedly, the Eighth Legion guarding the outside of the Yun Yang world had been replaced by the Seventh Legion. It was no wonder the righteous path was being bullied. While the Divine Families just watched, the commander of the Seventh Legion was Yi Ben Chang. He and Long Chen already had significant enmity toward each other. As the one in charge of that region, it would be a miracle if Yi Ben Chang didn't try to cause trouble for him in the righteous path. The current righteous path is being pressured from all sides. Their share of the battlefields is shrinking, and some of their disciples have died. One of them caused quite a stir. The Zhuangshan Dao sect Wang Zhen was killed by one of the Xuan Beast's experts, said Yu Ziaokian. What everyone was infuriated. Wang Zhen was one of the Zhuangshan Dao sect's core disciples. He was a very rare insect cultivator with immense power. He had once fought alongside the Dragonblood warriors. As a result, everyone's killing intent sword. That matter resulted in Yi Lingxian immediately declaring war on the Xuan beasts. The Martial Heaven Alliance went on an all-out assault. Both sides lost people, but due to their overwhelming numbers, the Martial Heaven Alliance suppressed the Xuan beasts. However, just as the latter began to be forced back, Pill Valley, the Corrupt Path, the Ancient Races, the Ancient Family Alliance, the Dongfang Family, and other powers arrived to stand by their side. As for the Nangong Family, the Bidang Family, and the Zeman Family, they stood beside Yi Lingxian. Both sides were about to start a war, and only then did the Divine Families interfere. The Heavenly Dragon Legion descended and split apart the two sides. Due to casualties appearing on both sides, they settled the matter by leaving it unsettled. The righteous path's morale has dropped because you haven't appeared in a long time. Everyone thinks that you failed and that the Martial Heaven Alliance's situation is unstable, said Yu Ziaokian. Yu Ziaokian had been forced to just watch as all this occurred. She was a member of the original Devil Race, so if she suddenly appeared, it would draw too much suspicion. Furthermore, Amongst all the original Devil Race's disciples, she was the only one capable of using the profound spirit Tao scripture, and thus the only one capable of concealing her identity from the continent's experts. The other disciples of the original Devil Race could be recognized. That was why even though Yi Lingxian and the Righteous Path had fallen into such a critical state, Yu Ziaokian hadn't dared to rashly take action. If things went badly, it would be adding oil to the fire. I thought that I was skilled at courting death. Who would have thought that this world has people even more skilled than me in that regard? A vein throbbed on Long Chen's forehead. We're going. Ziaokian, you come with us this time. They activated the transportation formation to return to the wild world. The wild world was in the same state as when they had left. The original devil race was excavating many precious ores and their elite warriors were guarding the spatial portals to exterminate any of the devil race's experts that arrived. Xia Chen then activated the transportation formation within the wild world. Divine light enveloped everyone, and they appeared within the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race's territory. However, when they arrived, they found that things were chaotic. Countless Xuan beasts were attacking. The grand formation had already been broken. 
powerful Schwen beasts poured in like a tide. They were all nether passage experts, and they were also Empyreans. The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race's territory was badly damaged. The ground was littered with corpses. Many of them belonged to the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race. Kei Yasu was leading her experts at the core of the formation. Only this core area was able to remain whole, but even it was on the verge of crumbling. Ha ha ha. Kei Yasu, this is the result of not adapting to change. You wanted to rely on a little human whose fur hasn't even grown in? Did you think that would allow you to rest at ease? Now, Long Chen and his Dragonblood Legion are dead. So your cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race can go with them to hell. Space has been locked here, and it's impossible to send requests for help. You're trapped. Do you regret your actions now? If you surrender, I can give you a path to life. One of the Pen race's experts stood in the air, directing the attack of the Xuan beasts. Pen Wanshan, the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race will not bend our spines even in death, shouted Kei Yuzhu. Oh? Then I'll just break them instead. Kill them all. They can't last much longer, sneered that expert. Pen Wanli was the leader of the Pen race and the Xuan beasts. While this person was Pen Wanli's brother, Pen Wanshan, he was a well-known member of the Xuan beasts with an extremely high status. His position was second only to Pen Wanli. What a good idea. Just at this moment, a sinister voice rang out. It was like a devil had been summoned, and killing intent turned the air cold. Long Chen, Kei Yuzhu and the others cried out in relief and delight. Long Chen and the Dragonblood Legion hadn't died. Furthermore, their auras had clearly grown, and their Yuan spirits had broken through to the next level. They could undergo their tribulation at any time to become true Nether Passage experts. Everyone from the Dragonblood Legion had actually succeeded. Heaven-shaking cheers came from the experts of the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race. On the other side. Pen Wanchen and the other experts of the Xuan beasts were badly shocked. However, Pen Wanchen suddenly laughed. Ha ha ha, excellent. You came at the perfect time. You haven't even undergone your tribulations. Yet you dared to come? Then today, the brilliance of the Dragonblood Legion and the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race can die here. Pen Wanchen's initial shock quickly turned to excitement. In his eyes. Long Chen and the Dragonblood Legion had yet to become Nether Passage experts. They had basically thrown themselves into their net. Then we'll see if you have that ability Long Chen suddenly sneered. He charged forward into their midst. Long Chen, do you think you're still unrivaled? You're just a piece of trash now. A spotted tiger unleashed a powerful claw at him. His manifestation rumbled behind him. He was an Empyrean who had awakened his manifestation and had now advanced into the Nether Passage Realm. Shwen beasts that successfully advanced to the Nether Passage Realm had their bodies grow stronger, and their bloodline divine abilities took another step forward. Long Chen didn't directly receive this attack. Lightning wings appeared on his back, and he turned into a streak of light, narrowly avoiding the claw. The tiger roared angrily and opened his mouth. Terrifying ripples began to form. However, before he could unleash his next attack, a transparent crescent moon blade stabbed through his jaw and came out of the top of his head. His giant body shuddered and then fell to the ground. He didn't move again. He was killed by a tiny crescent moon blade. He, big sister Len Yuian is great. I really love her. Tang Wanner was smiling excitedly. The crescent moon blade came flying back to her. She had just killed a Nether Passage Empyrean with an awakened manifestation in just one easy blow. Endless falling wood. Earthen thorns piece the sky. Chu Yao waved her staff. The earth exploded and countless wooden staves flew out. Chu Yao felt like the entire earth's life energy was hers to command. She felt unlimited power. As the wooden staves flew through the air, the Xuan beasts that were pouncing upon Long Chen were forced back. They let out miserable cries when those staves pierced their bodies. Chu Yao's attack range encompassed the entire battlefield. Twisting wooden staves covered everything, forming a giant defensive domain. Everyone was amazed by Chu Yao's range. In the past, Chu Yao had also been skilled in wide area attacks. But due to how widely spread her attacks were, they were lacking sharpness and unable to pose a fatal threat to true experts. Most of the time they would be able to dodge or flee. However, with the wooden staff, 
Chu Yao's wood spirit energy had become more vigorous. Even the earth was supporting her, giving her attacks an extra sharpness. They struck like lightning. Even Chu Yao herself was shocked. The staff that Len Yuan had given her was a priceless treasure. Boom. Just at this moment, Long Chen unleashed his own powerful attack. His divine ring had appeared behind him, and dragon scales were covering his body. However, dozens of the Xuan beasts awakened Empyreans joined forces to stop him. He was unable to get past them. Haha, <laughs> Long Chen, do you think everyone is still stuck in the Life Star Realm? You're no different than trash right now. Do you really think you can charge in and kill me? Are you trying to make me laugh to death? Pen Wanchen sneered from behind those experts. He clasped his hands behind him, seemingly having no intention of fighting. So what if Long Chen was powerful? There were over a hundred of the Xuan Beast's young geniuses who had awakened their manifestations here. Even if Long Chen could fight ten, could he fight a hundred? Although Chu Yao and Tang Wan'er's attacks had been surprising, they were just some minor surprises. They were unable to change the entire board. By charging into their midst, in Pen Wanchen's eyes, Long Chen had trapped himself. He couldn't escape his palm. Hence, Pen Wanchen felt no fear. You're wrong. I didn't come to kill you, but to smash your spine apart. Killing intent raged in Long Chen's eyes, and a certain object appeared in his hand. With a powerful toss, it became a ray of light smashing through their midst. 